report, we can say that we don't have one, or, or did we meet? No, we didn't. Okay, great. No so, zoning subcommittee report. Great, okay. Um, so I assume there's no public comment for that. So that takes care of four. Um, we can skip to, how about, could we go to item seven, number D? Uh, Chris included a letter from PPC, um, which is a separate issue than if we talk about uh, Pioneer Valley uh, Planning Commission later under Planning Board Committee and Liaison Reports. Um, Chris, did you have something to tell us about this letter that you included in our packet from PVPC? Um, it's a letter that we receive every year, and it goes to um, David Burgess, who's the, the principal assessor, and it is to let, um, let Mr. Burgess and other members of the town know that our assessment, and did I not include the assessment page? Um, okay. Just well, this. Oh, I'm so sorry, because we were supposed to have a list of all the cities and towns that are included in the PVPC. Uh, there are 43 of them, and that list shows what their assessments are. So I can get you that list if you're interested, but Amherst's assessment is around $6,500 a year, and some um, assessments are higher than that and some are lower. But um, if you're really Could interested... Could you email that to I us? I will email Great. it to you, yep. All right. And does anyone have any questions on that? Okay, it looks like we're 7.05, so with that, we can go back to the first public hearing. Um, I'll read the preamble and open the public hearing. Uh, in accordance with the, uh, yeah, make sure I'm reading the right part. In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted this hearing is being held for the purpose of providing an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding SPR uh, 2019-08 Javier Campos of Adams and Ruxton for Bank of America at 360 College Street. Um, so SP, it's the request for site plan review approval to install new light posts and fixtures to provide better illumination, safety, and security for Bank of America, ATM. It's in a commercial zoning district, district map uh, 15A parcel 28. Uh, first, I need to ask, are there any board member disclosures? No, everyone's good. Okay, so uh, the next item would be the applicant's presentation. Welcome. If you can just make sure your mic's on or, yeah, Chris is coming around. It's, uh, yeah, she'll show oh, you. There you go. Great. It's on. <laughs> um, so good evening. Uh, my name is Javier Campos. I'm a project manager for Adams and Roxton Construction Company. Uh, we are general contractors that work for Bank of America, and I'm also a PM project manager who's going to be working on the project that we'll be discussing shortly. Um, so uh, basically, uh, a brief description, uh, Bank of America has what they call an ELP, um, Exterior Lighting Program, where they basically go around their sites and they survey their sites and determine uh, whether or not a site is in need of additional lighting, again, as, as you stated, for the safety and security of the customers. And they deemed this site over at uh, 360 College Street, uh, it needed improvements. Uh, so, um, so basically, they want to add additional lighting on the exterior attached to, to the uh, little strip mall where it's at, and add two additional light posts in the parking area. So I'm here to, I mean, I think I, I submitted uh, both drawings, engineer drawings, showing the location of the uh, light fixtures, as well as cut sheets of each individual light fixture um, for, your, for you to, to review. So obviously we, we hope to proceed with this work. Could you give us a little bit of detail about how the design, we, we We'll mm -hmm. get into the site visit mm -hmm. next, but we did notice some work had happened already, and yep. 
yeah. If you so, just... I mean, the um, most, all, basically all the work is electrical work. Um, uh, ad addition, adding, you know, lights, fixtures to the building and the light posts. So our electrical subcontractor went ahead and pulled an electrical permit and received it. Um, so we kind of mistakenly thought that that's all we needed. Uh, obviously that, you know, uh, building inspector went by and told us to, you know, stop the work and that we needed to apply and, and you know, for, for review first. So that's what, uh, that, that's what we did. And, uh, you know, obviously we immediately stopped and we haven't worked there since, but of course we'd like to continue. Okay. Um, the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, so the light poles originally were 25 feet um, tall. Um, we had a, like, a little pre-review of this uh, with uh, Christine over here and she su suggested uh, dropping them to 15 feet, which the latest drawings call for, so we did that. And uh, while still attaining the, the lighting lumens that the bank is looking for. So. Did you email the, those to us? Uh, oh, I'm so with, with sorry. With my application, I, 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 I thought it all went with my application to you guys. You sent it to whom? To me? To, oh gosh. Um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking out. Did on, you send it to the... Pam? Did it? <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay. I, th I think I did, right? Um, I think I forwarded everything to you oh. today. No, no, it, this is when I originally sent my application in, uh, you know, a few weeks back. Oh, that's all these said. That's, this is what I sent. Right. But I don't remember receiving any updates. Uh, there shouldn't be any updates. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if, if you look at, for example, at the uh, at LU2, uh, where, it's, where it shows the, um, the light fixture schedule, it does show a height of 15 feet. Um, so if that's not what you have, then I, I apologize. But that, that's, it, is, it is what we have. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the latest and greatest, as they say, of, of the engineer drawings for, for this site. Right. right. That was enlightening. Um, is, do you want to open the questions or can I do yeah, the site right, visit first? Right. Okay. Um, so before we open up to questions from the board, we're just going to talk about the site visit that happened today. Um, okay. I believe all five of us were there at the site visit. Um, Chris, there's no site visit report, right? Okay. So do one of you all want to give a summary? Michael? Uh, sure, we um, observed the uh, area under consideration and uh, looked at the uh, existing lights under the overhang that exists underneath the, um, the three uh, store fr uh, business fronts. Um, we noticed um, the pole, the uh, yellow bollards, which are in position uh, on, to uh, serve as the basis for the, uh, the new lights that you're proposing. Uh, and we noticed uh, on the uh, Pole at the corner of Southeast Street and uh, College Street, an existing lighting fixture, a downcast lighting fixture, and wondered about that, whether it was operable, uh, and whether or not it was part of the plan that you were proposing. Um, and uh, that's about, about it, I think. It, it, de it definitely is not part of our plans, not showing the drawing, so that's an existing fixture that was already there. And um, is that lighting fixture operable? Does it currently work? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, Wouldn't that impinge on whether or not this lighting proposal is necessary? Um, I, I would have to get the engineer and ask the question, sir. I, you know, would they go out and they, you know, come with their photometric uh, instruments and, and basically they decide what, if, if it doesn't meet Bank of America standards as far as lumens, then they keep adding. Uh, but whether that light fixture was on or not at the time they were there, I don't know the answer to that. I, I could certainly find out or even, you know, go after this meeting and, and, and take a picture or see if, if it, it's on or not. 
I think part of the issue is um, it's there, so you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're, of course you can upgrade your lighting, that's mm -hmm. great, but you'd also, would we, we would be wondering, so is that gonna stay? Is that gonna be, you know, taken away or? It, it is not part of the scope, I can tell you that. Uh, but again, I can find out. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Um, so if, does anyone else have anything to add to the site visit before we move on? And, okay. Um, so at this point, I will open um, questions to the board, and then after that, I'll open um, it to uh, public comment. Uh, okay, so you want to start, Michael? Yeah, is the 15-foot uh, proposal proposed height on top of the existing 3-foot standard, or is that a total? No, that's a total. That that's a total. the total height of, oh. the of the lighting fixture itself. Correct. So the, the head of, of the light fixture on top of the pole which will be at 15 feet. Thank you. Yep. At 15 feet, not 25 feet. It, Correct. 15. 15. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, we did notice that across the street, that was what appeared to sort mm -hmm. of be in the Florence Savings Bank okay. parking lots. Um, anyone else have a question, Anna? Janet? I do. Um, have there been safety problems at that site at the ATM? Like, what problem are you trying to solve? Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it, does not, it doesn't have to have a problem. Just if, if the bank, uh, their engineers, you know, they, they have a certain... Uh, amount of lighting that they require per bank, and if it doesn't have that, then they add additional lighting. Uh, it doesn't mean that that there's been problems or issues at all, but they just like to keep a, a certain amount of light outside all their ATMs and banks of lumens. David? Who owns the property, and does Bank of America have the right to plant these light poles there? Uh, of course. Uh, so it, it is not a bank-owned uh, property, um, but uh, obviously they go through their, the landlord and make sure that it's okay. And uh, we have received, they, or they have received permission uh, to do this work. And I, I'd be happy to give you, you know, confirmation of that if, if that's what you need. I just want to clarify mm -hmm. something. So I'm looking at the specs that were mm -hmm. given to us, right. and I think some of the confusion came from on the back page. Right. The red box says 25. You know what? That, that, that may be the old and one. I, yes. It could, yes. And I think that's where. Yeah. Because I'm like, how did this? Ha so. Um, so looking at the new, when I look in the details, mm -hmm. uh, it says 15 feet. That's Correct. total feet. Correct. And how high are the bases right now? They're about approximately three feet high. Approximately three. Yeah. And so you would just put on uh, the pole another and it would 12, tap out. Yeah, 12 feet on top of that, yeah, for, for the post, yes. Okay, yes, so that's good. Any more questions? Um, about the bases, which are quite um, large and bulky, is there a way to make them more attractive than bright yellow, <laughs> large concrete, like bollards or some kind of planting? I also noticed that one on the east side seemed very close to the pull-in, mm -hmm. and I wondered if people would just hit it. And, and actually, now that you are talking about it, not, I'm wondering if you can just solve your lighting and safety problem just by the lights on the building, like on the ceiling of the building, just to make it less unattractive. <laughs> the question was asked, and, and they, I mean, the engineer, GMR, who designed this, just could not get the adequate amount of lighting that's, that the bank requires just solely on fixtures attached to the building. I mean, they're, in addition to the two posts, they're adding three more as well to the building. Uh, and it just, they couldn't get the minimum amount of lumens required per bank standards that they have to comply to, yeah. Okay, Michael? Uh, you say the bank requires. Uh, don't you mean the bank prefers or suggests or recommends? It is not in their position, not in their purview to require mm -hmm. uh, a level of lighting. It's our responsibility to do that. Yeah, I mean, the bank has, does have minimum standards, and that's what they, they prefer. I mean, obviously, you know, they have, that, they have branches everywhere. And, um, I mean, they'd like to keep it uniform throughout. Are those standards in place at the uh, Triangle Street uh, bank, bank uh, location? Uh, my assumption is yes, but 
I'm not familiar with that uh, location. So these, uh, this new lighting system that you're proposing on College Street will be the equal in terms of the output of light uh, as the one on Triangle Street? I'm not familiar with Triangle Street. It's, it's I mean, the output of light, and it's, it's shown in one of the drawings over here as far as the amount of lumens. Uh, so, um, again, we, I don't, I'm not familiar with that site. Go ahead, David. Is the purpose of the Bank of America ELP program mm -hmm. to more brightly illuminate Bank of America storefronts? And will the, and a, a rela related question is, will this corner now be brighter than all the other corners at this fairly busy for this you know small town inter uh, 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 at this intersection? So will this what will be the the the, the net effect of brightening the, st the skies with, the, with these lights? I, I, it's mostly for the, they say it's safe for the safety and security of, of their customers. Uh, well, it's gonna be brighter than what's out there um, without me taking a reading on the, in the surrounding areas, I, I, I can't say. Jack. Um, is the lighting to be on like 24, or not 24 seven, but from dusk to dawn sort of thing? Correct, yes. Okay. David? Is there any way to mitigate the, the, the light bleed pollution that will, that will result? Yeah, I mean, all the new fixtures are, you know, full cutoff, you know, dark skies, you know, friendly compliant uh, fixtures. Um. I think I read on the specs here that the Kelvins you're going with, um, is it 40K or 4,000K? Um, it's hard to tell, you know, because you have the, the um, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,700. At the top of the chart, mm -hmm. it does say 40K, which is a mid-range. It's not a right. blue-white, and it's not a warm, but I just wanted to confirm that. All right, yes. Um, so this, this um, call sheets were given by, by the uh, designer, and the, you're talking about the red uh, writing. It does say 40K, so that's, that's what we would install. So it would be 40. Um, is that a Bank of America standard, or are they open to possibly doing uh, 3,000? I, I could ask a question, ma'am. I, you know. I would appreciate if you yeah. could ask that question. Yeah. It's a, warmer light, it's, mm -hmm. it's less harsh, and where people are concerned about light spray, um, that does soften it quite a bit. Anyone else have a, uh, Chris? If they do decide to leave the um, bases there and you decide to let I'm them leave the bases, back. is there some other color that they could use besides yellow? Well, I don't. I, uh, issue I have, I want to go back to Janet's point, um, where if we look at the map, if you look at um, LU3, and it has where you've already poured the bases, mm -hmm. and they flank um, each of the driveways. Uh, being at the site visit today, you know, I, um, with some of my transportation background and parking spaces, I was like, that's tight, and the handicap spots there. Was there consideration in the design to move the right-hand one, the one to the east, further to the east, to be on the other side of the driveway where there's no spaces and it could be tucked over? Now, I don't know how far it could be pushed over, but you'd have to run your photovoltaic uh, modeling again. Right. And if you were doing that, I would be interested in knowing if you could push the pole um, that is um, on the left and move that further west to the other side of the driveway. And if that modeling could be done with the 15-foot um, height, would that give you enough lumens to cover the site that yeah. would meet? Yeah, they, yeah, the designer would have to run all those. And you could cut yeah. the bases and just mm -hmm. re-pour them. So that would be an option to be Explored? I'm sure I can definitely explore it. I will ask a question. 
Anyone have any other comments on that? Um, when you're doing that, can you see about that extra light to see if that's on and things mm -hmm. like that? And just maybe bring some alternative bases that kind of fit the area better? Well, that's a good point. That made me think that the reason why these were so high was because if you just put the metal pole and that gets hit, you're gonna, they're gonna, right, break, because right, yeah. they're very fragile. But if you could move the bases and spread them further, there's a much lower chance of them getting hit, and mm -hmm. then the bases could be lower, okay. and you can still adjust your pole to be 15. Um, mm -hmm. Good point. So then they, we wouldn't have to worry about them being big yellow um, tubes. Any other comments on this? Question? Yeah. Oh, could you, I understand uh, how the, uh, HT1 poles are, are uh, uh, mounted. Can you explain how the SK1 lighting and the SH1 lighting fixtures are attached to the building? Yeah, the, basically they're just attached to the exterior wall. I mean, exterior wall, not right. to the overhang? Not to the overhang, to the exterior wall. Well, they appear to be attached to the overhang. You know what, that's, you're correct. I'll, I'll confirm that. They are attached yeah. to the overhang. At what level are they attached? Okay, so they are, if you go back to LU2, it'll, it'll tell you the level of each one. And they appear to be at, the SKs are about 14 feet above finish ground. 14 feet above? Mm. That means they're higher than the building itself. <laughs> Is that correct? So how are they? How are they mounted on the building? You know, sir. When when I saw this, I, I just assumed that they were attached to the wall. I, I I did not see that 14 feet, so I would have to question that. Or you know, there's an under part of the mm -hmm. building that you say you're removing those lights. So, yeah. So and those. These, you know, with that point, they must be on the the overhang of the building, mm -hmm. the flush part. Yeah, that would be, we didn't get a front pitch, you know, we're only looking at flat, so mm -hmm. that's a good point, so. And, and would those also be on from dusk till dawn? Yes. There, is there, a, there's no way that any of these lights could be motion censored or, I mean, for the safety and security, because otherwise it just seems to be to be a means to illuminate what's there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, any light can have a motion sensor. I could ask the question of whether those would be acceptable uh, to use at that location. Chris? I would just like to bring up the topic of this area being um, considered a village center or at least a budding village center and um, that there should be consideration for um, this to become a pedestrian area with a nice streetscape. So um, whatever is put here should be in keeping with that idea because I think other things that are happening in this location are um, tending towards that type of um, image and character. So that's just a, a thought for you to consider as you're um, reviewing this project. Um, Chris, I know we don't have a standard right now that we're following for street lights. Uh, there's a trend towards one, the certain light that we're use, we used at Atkins and we've used on the northern end of town. Um, do you feel, and it is proposed in the southeast development across the street from this, yeah. So I'm really not talking about the style of light. I'm really yeah. talking about the same thing that Mr. Levenstein was talking about the brightness of this location, when you're thinking of um, a streetscape that is comfortable for people to walk in mm -hmm. and to, you know, want to go to, to have, you know, some, I don't know what, meal or go to a store or something like that. That kind of bright, you know, sort of shopping center-like um, right. lighting system is not conducive to um, feeling like you want to go to a place and like it is a village center. So just something to consider. So it sounds like at this point they need to go back and re-examine and, and potentially redesign what we have on our documentation here. So um, is the general consensus that we should 
you know, continue this at a, another meeting and they can come back with their, their new information? Is everyone in agreement mm -hmm. with that? All right, I think you have enough takeaways from yep. this. To, I know what to do. All right, yep. thank you. Okay, thank um, you. So we have, yeah. Are you going to vote to continue it to yes, a date certain? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so uh, we need to hear a motion that, um, do we have to have a date? To open? Any suggestions? <laughs> I think the next date that I'm sure that we will have people available would be the 18th of September. And that, and so the, the new documentation will be created, it's emailed to you, and then you'll get it to us, and then we would see you on the 18th. Okay. Does that sound all right? Okay. Sounds, sure. So I need a motion. I move to continue the hearing until September 18th Do at uh, 705. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do I hear a second? Second. Um, okay, uh, any more discussion on that? We good? Okay. Uh, I think there's oh. someone in the audience. Oh. oh. Make a comment. D we can, we, we, so con I can take a public comment right now too. Sorry. Um, so if there's someone who wants to speak to it, you can come up to the microphone and um, please give your name and, and your address and you can address. Thank you. So, Vince O'Connor, uh, 175 Summer Street, uh, Amherst. And my comment is I, I was the sponsor um, of a town meeting in our well, general bylaw article, uh, a dark sky bylaw, with a set of time periods for eliminating certain types of lighting and, and oh. controlling other types Hold of lighting. Hold on. Can you push the button right in front of you, Vince, to turn on the. Yeah, he'll not. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and. So my concern is that there not be any lighting on this side or any other sites that shines in the upward direction. Um, no, no lights that are on the ground that shine up, no lights that are on the wall that shine up, um, and that um, the lighting that is uh, proposed, I mean, you, you can see example of, a, of a good intentions, but bad outcome at the People's Bank at the corner of South Prospect and, uh, and Amity Street, where technically they, the, the lighting may be proper, but in fact the, the lights on that site shine into the second floor windows of all the surrounding uh, residential properties. So I think it's important that, um, that in addition to having the lights be cut off, that the, the, the fixture that emits the light not be visible from off-site so that it's much more efficient to have a fixture that directs all the light in the downward direction on the areas that you want lit up. And having the, having the light shine off the property is a waste of both energy and it's an annoyance to the abutters. And uh, that also can be seen at the at, if you want to see an example of that, uh, you can go to Long Meadow Drive to the affordable housing property, which is an annoyance both to the residents and to the abutters um, because the lights are not, they shine in the second floor windows of all the surrounding properties and, and the residents, the properties of the residents who live there. So I think it's, it is important that not just having cutoff fixtures, but fixtures that make sure that the light is focused in the downward direction and is not, and the, and the, the source of the illumination is not visible from off the site. I believe what you're asking for is you like shielded lights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's correct. And I, I think it's important that we start doing this. And, and when somebody comes in with proposing to add fixtures and leave others in place, I would urge the planning board to say, yes, we'll let you have new fixtures if they're appropriate and proper, but, we want, but if there are existing fixtures that are problematic, that the board condition the, new, the approval of the new fixtures on removal of certain older fixtures that, that really um, violate the, the board's uh, lighting standards. 
And I think that's a, a, it's a reasonable condition. I think that it's a way to begin things, although a general bylaw that would cover the entire town within a, a reasonable period of time, I think is what we should be looking for. But thank you for your time. Thank you. I think you were heard by that, and so please, you know, consider that. Um, so are there any other public comments to this? I don't see. Um, any other comments on the board? Okay, well, um, all in favor of continuing this, uh, following the motion the 18th, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, great, unanimous. Thank you, and Thank we'll you. see you on the 18th. Yep. Okay, uh, so. Next public hearing for a site plan review is uh, in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted. This hearing is being held for the purpose of providing an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding SPR uh, 2019 07 and SPP 2019 04. Uh, Amir, um, I forgot how to say this, Amici? Uh, Michi, thank you, Michi. Southeast Street, uh, Court Housing uh, 133 and 143 Southeast Street. Uh, this is a joint public hearing to request a site plan review approval to construct a new three-story mixed-use building with 62 apartment units, uh, 1,358 square feet of retail space and associated site improvements and work in the town right-of-way under sections 3.325 of the zoning bylaw and request a special permit to modify the front and side setback requirements under footnote A of Table 3, Section 6 of the Zoning Bylaw, BVC Zoning District, Map 15C, Parcel 3 and 4. Okay, and you all are settling in. Great. Uh, first off, any board disclosures? I see none. Um, so we'll move on to the applicant's presentation. If you could introduce yourselves and, and then proceed. Yes, my name is Amir Mikchi, and I'm the owner of this project, 133. I have to push oh. this. Could you is speak it more into the microphone? Oh, okay. Ah, damn uh, it. My name is Amir Mikchi, the owner of the 133-143 South East Street, and uh, the application for the 64, 62 uh, units and two retail space in, at that location. And I have Mike Lu, who is, can explain the whole project, and Mr. Roy Brown, who is the architect of the project. Great. If you could both introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, Michael Liu with the Berkshire Design Group. I'm the landscape architect and designer for the project. Roy Brown, architect, Wilmerham. Um, I'll start. <laughs> okay. So um, this project is at the uh, along Southeast Street. I wonder if I can use this as a. I'm trying to figure out if I have a pointer here. Oops. I guess not. Um, highlighted on the screen in red are uh, the two parcels. Uh, currently, there are two um, residential units on uh, the property. I think one is vacated. And is there, oh, oh, okay, both are vacated now. Combined, the site is just over one and a quarter acre. Um, as you can see from the aerial photo, it's basically the houses front on Southeast Street. There's a very wide uh, right of way on Southeast Street, and then the back portion of the um, uh, properties are basically currently just lawn space um, for the two um, units. Um, the proposal is for um, this uh, L-shaped um, apartment building. It's a three-story building. Uh, Roy Brown can um, talk about that, or if you have any questions about the building. Um, there's, uh, again, three stories with 62 residential units. 
there are two um, retail spaces on the ground floor totaling, well, each of them about 1,200 square feet. Um, the parking, as you can see, comes off of Southeast Street and comes into a parking lot. Uh, so most of the parking is going to be hidden uh, from the streetscape. The building is proposed to be uh, pushed up very close to the property line. We're asking for a six-foot setback on the front uh, street line. The setback is um, a 10-foot minimum to 20-foot maximum. Uh, it is shown by the red uh, parallel red dash line that goes around on the inside perimeter of the property. Um, it's, a, it's a tight site and it's very, I'm going to say it's very efficiently used. There is an isolated wetland in the center part of the site. We are proposing replication of that wetland at, I think it was a four to one ratio, a four to one ratio at the southwest corner, which is the low point of the site. Uh, it's highlighted um, by the kind of like the blue uh, background coloring down uh, to the south of the parking area. Um, there's a couple of bike racks proposed at the entry of the building, which is at the crook of the L. There's an arrival plaza there. That's the main entry to the uh, building for residents. Um, additionally, there's an entry opposite uh, at the um, uh, southeast street side. Um, and I'll talk about some of the work in the right of way there. But the, uh, there's a door to the, at the northeast side of the building, which will get you access to southeast street, uh, to the sidewalk on southeast street. Now, the proposed uh, improvements in the roadway include road widening of the uh, actual physical road itself that was uh, requested by the town. Um, as you know, some of the road was widened from basically the, um, the curb cut to the Florence Bank parcel just to the north to the intersection of um, College Street. Um, so this project is also proposing to widen the street down to uh, the bottom where, you know, the end of the rendering is shown uh, south of the entry. Um, it also includes a, p a bus stop um, shown where that uh, large red vehicle is shown in the roadway. Um, I asked for that to be blue, but somehow it turned out to be red. <laughs> um, but there's a bus stop. The sidewalk would be redone from, from the curb cut to the Florence Bank parcel, which you can just see at the top of the rendering all the way down um, to the uh, new driveway to the project. There's a, a semicircular um, pedestrian plaza outside of where the retail space is and also between uh, the building and the bus stop uh, with a walkway connection down to the bus stop. So we can envision that, you know, I don't know what the retail is going to be ultimately, but. Potentially, it might be some type of coffee shop or a convenience store or, or combination or something like that. Um, this space would also serve as perhaps an open space gathering location for the residents of the, um, the, the building. Uh, seeing that there's uh, kind of minimal green space or usable space um, around on the um, back side of the building, if you will. Uh, um, so there's a, ser um, a, a series of sidewalks that connect from the building to the, to the street sidewalk and green lawn space, which be regraded and reseeded and, and smoothed out. Um, as you know right now, the, the drainage comes off the street and kind of just sits in that, in that green space right now and pretty much pools and infiltrates, you know, at, um, to the best ability it can. Um, We've gotten conservation approval already on this layout with the drainage system. Um, it's been reviewed by the town engineer, um, and we've gotten an um, order of conditions on this project um, that was granted, I think, in the spring. Was that June? No, or May or something of this um, this this year. Um, this is a couple months ago. Um, the only drainage we're proposing in the street, which was um, discussed with the town and the town engineer, is that at the bus stop area, um, it, it's a low point. To the south of the site, approximately where the entrance drive enters the project, there's a high point and there's a slow, very gentle grade uh, back to the north. 
Um, so catching water approximately where the bust is indicated on the plan, we're proposing just a catch basin in the road and a piped um, with a outlet pipe back to an existing catch basin that's in the green space in the right of way to the north. And that continues uh, outlets and connects to the drain system, which you know heads up to um, College College Street. Um, I've gotten a verbal approval from Jason Skeels um, about for that simplified system, and um, I know that I don't think he's provided a memo or, or anything to the board. Um, and you might be seeking, you know, verbal um, or a, a written um, approval on that. Um, I guess I'm gonna, if unless there's any other questions, I'm gonna if you, let uh, Roy. Do you want to say anything about the building or? I'm going to continue and just flip through this to show you the, oops, oops, wrong way. Um, that's the style of the building. Um, the up, the um, elevation to the top is from Southeast Street. The, um, the uh, retail locations are shown by the green awnings. So right outside of that space would be the semicircular um, gathering space and then continuing on to Southeast Street. The bottom elevation is the back side of the building looking, is that looking east? Is that right? And then um, similarly, whoops, going the wrong way. Uh, other, other elevations, um, the top one looking south. So that would be uh, the facade that would be facing the um, uh, Florence Bank property. And then the other, the bot. Oh, do I got that backwards? Okay, sorry. Um, and then the south is from the driveway, and, and north is from the forest bank. Okay, all right. So that's the style of the building, um, and I guess I'll conclude right there, and I'm gonna open it up to comments and questions, which I'm sure you'll have. Oh, there's, I think there's one more. I'm going the wrong way. Um, we did prepare, have a uh, lighting plan prepared, and obviously it's a little bit small. Um, but you can see the lighting locations, which are basically centered in those, in those um, I think those are uh, one foot candle um, blobs. <laughs> um, but the, the style of the lighting is shown there. We try to mimic the new standard that's um, being used in town. Um, I think it's in two locations. The one I'm familiar with is the new roundabout at Triangle Street. Um, and there's also a couple of um, lights along Southeast Street, which you can see, it's not shown, you can't see Southeast Street, but to the right of the building, uh, one at the bus stop to the north and one at the entry drive. So realizing that these are gonna be in the right of way, we tried to, uh, Amir was agreeable to choosing this style which would match the, the town standard. Um, thank you. That's it for the presentation, okay. Um, so the next thing we would move on to is there was a site visit today. All five of us here attended. Um, Chris, I assume there is no site visit report. Okay. So um, if one of you would be willing to give a summary of what we saw today. Well, um, <laughs> The, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the group uh, noticed uh, the um, large common area in front of the proposed project, uh, including some existing uh, vegetation, uh, particularly the large catalpa tree, which uh, is uh, in some sort of questionable state of health. Um, it seems to be, um, wired up uh, significantly. On the other hand, it seems to be quite uh, present as a, uh, as a visual statement and uh, the leaves and, and the flowering of the tree seems to be very healthy. Uh, we noticed the two buildings uh, referred to that are existing on the property in, uh, in somewhat questionable repair. Uh, noticed the large area uh, in the back uh, Noticed where the uh, flood plain, where the uh, um, um, uh, low water, low air, low area where water will collect in the spring exists, um, 
and uh, thought about issues of um, the uh, slope of the landscape, uh, particularly as it uh, relates to the street and the slope downward toward the buildings and then the slightly raised platform on which the building is proposed, uh, and thought about how much fill would be necessary to um, um, complete the project as proposed. Um, notice the fence that exists between the property and um, Florence Bank property. Uh, notice the proximity of the Amherst College land on the south and west side. Um, and uh, that's about it, I think. Anything else that we want to Anything think about? Else to add? Thank you, Michael. Um, so the next, uh, we'll open it up to the board. I just wanted to, before we open up to questions, I wanted to ask Chris if you could update us on the status of the tree. We had opened this um, before as a public heat and it ended because we weren't sure about the tree. Do you have an update? I heard there's a meeting coming or something. Um, I spoke with the town manager about the tree issue. Um, the board, the planning board did hold a public hearing um, on April 17th and um, one of the residents of town uh, brought in a letter of opposition to the tree removal. So the public hearing that the planning board was holding with the tree warden um, pretty much stopped at that point. And um, the planning board closed the public hearing expecting that the decision on the trees would go up to town council. But after consulting with the town manager and the um, attorney, uh, the town attorney, uh, it, it's been determined that um, the decision really needs to go to the town manager rather than town council. So uh, what we've been advised to do by the town attorney is for the planning board and the tree warden to go ahead and hold an, a second public hearing um, with uh, the introduction of the letter of opposition during that public hearing. It's already been introduced, so we'll just reintroduce it. Um, and then the planning board needs to make a decision on whether it uh, agrees that the trees can come down and the tree warden needs to state his position on whether the trees should come down, and then the planning board can close the public hearing, and given the fact that a letter of opposition has been submitted, um, state law says it must go to the, um, the executive in town, who is the town manager, so after that, the town manager would make the final decision about whether the trees would come down or not. Does that help? Yeah, any questions on that, anyone? We understand, okay. Um, Thank you. So at this point, I'll open it up to questions on the board, um, general questions, and then we'll start to go through our checklists and get specific. Um, does anyone want to start? I saw David first, and then you're next. For you. David. Um, on the architectural drawings, how, how tall is the, 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 the full height of the building? The third floor looked like went to 32 feet, but including the roof and the, uh, um, the, the fencing structure on top. And if you don't know, that's fair, that's, uh, but, but if you could approximate, it would be great. Um, approximately, let's see. Do you use the microphone? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sir. Yeah. Uh, first floor, I think, is about 11. I think the next floor is uh, yeah. 10 foot 6. Yeah. And then the next floor is 10 foot 6, and then it pitches up to the roof. Um, so you have uh, about um, 30, maybe about 40 feet plus the uh, the guard fence at the top, the widow's walk, approximately 40 feet. That's including the fence on the top or not, just plus the structure? The, plus plus the, the fence on the top, that'll be 42 inches, but that's an open, open rail fence. Michael, do you have um, a question? That was basically the question I was saying. <laughs> the, 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 fe the fence at the top is only a two foot high fence? No, no, no. What I, what I said was uh, a 42 inch fence. So I'm, I'm saying approximately 40 feet to the flat piece of the roof and then a 42 inch high fence. Chris, is there a way we can confirm that height? Is that written anywhere I on one of our applications? I are your building height, I think, is to the average of a sloped portion, yeah. isn't it? 
and I, I thought I, That's right. I, it's a pro, I measured it, but I didn't have an exact uh, height. I, I'm coming up with 37 feet to, the, to that midpoint of the slope. That's the, on, on your drawing L2, the site drawing L2, that is the height that was listed, and that goes up to the midpoint of the slope. Mm -hmm. That's how the planning, uh, excuse me, how the zoning bylaw um, measures the height of the building. That's also how the, the building code measures buildings. 37 feet to the midpoint. Did you say it was on L2? Uh, L2 over to the left. There was a little, there was a zoning table on the, yeah, illustrative site plan. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions from the board? Yes, Janet. Hi, um, I have some questions. So could you just tell me about the size of the apartments, one bedroom, two bedroom, what, who you expect to be renting, price of, rental prices? What market are you looking for and expecting? Uh, they're all uh, one bedroom apartment and uh, roughly there are 595 square feet. And uh, it is intended for young professional basically because I used to teach at UMass some time, long, long time ago. And I had friends who used to come from Boston and they were looking for a place to live. And that is basically, that, that is where I got the idea that you know, I would have a place that I could accommodate these people that are coming, that they want to know a uh, nice, simple, a clean place, that they are from the crowd. And that was basically it. And for the rent, I don't know, I mean, talk, I have to talk to, we haven't finalized it. I'm thinking about in the vicinity of 1,200 to 1,300. Sorry, 12. 1,200 to 1,300. And could they be students, undergraduate students, or? Of course, we cannot discriminate. <laughs> if they apply, you know, um, they can. But my intention was for the young professional who want just, you know, space. But it is available to anyone. Can there be an occupancy of two people in a one bedroom? Or is there like one or two people? Sure. Yeah. It, it also might be married couples. Right. But it, two would be the max in a... Yes. In, yes. Yeah. It's only one bedroom, yeah. Any other questions? Michael. Um, I assume none of these uh, units are uh, designated as affordable housing units. Uh, did you give it any thought to the possibility of having affordable housing units in this building? You did not give any thought to that. Speak in the mic, please. No, they did. Um, do you have any idea what the economic impact of having those affordable units would have been on the total project? I.e., I. could you have built the project? Could you build the project if there were affordable units in it? I never considered it, so I never, uh, because I was uh, asking my bank to see what they would. Uh, uh, do, but I never consider, definitely I would look into it if you, I have to, but I don't think that would stop me not to go ahead with the project. Chris, is there someone on staff who could potentially talk to him about the options of that? And We have discussed that option. Um, it's not a requirement, and so right. Mr. McChee has chosen not to include affordable units because it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement because of the fact that there is, uh, it is a mixed use building. Is that correct? Correct. There's no special permit required for the use. There's only a special permit required for a dimensional modification, which is a setback, which is not one of the um, uh, threshold items that's listed in the zoning bylaw. Well, it would be nice if you could reconsider. Sure. Um, any other questions here, concerns? Jack? Um, Mike, do you want to restate the reason for the, the reduced setback that you're seeking? Uh, we talked about that, uh, I believe, in the site. Um, it's kind of a, well, I don't know the total history, but when Amir was talking to the, um, 
um, building commissioner about this project, it was actually suggested to build a zero um, setback right. project. Um, I advised Amir that we should have some space between the foundation and the property line because we're going to have to put in um, some piping for drainage for, for, the, for the roof, et cetera, and that it would be in his best interest to have that on his property rather than in the town right of way if the building were actually set at zero. So I think, I guess Amir was encouraged that he could build a zero setback. And what we did was initially we started at pulling it at five feet back. It kind of moved to a minimum of four feet. Ultimately, it ended up here at six feet, just giving some strip of additional green space on the front and still allowing the little green planting strip on the back side of the building before you have the sidewalk. Um, we pretty much were locked into where the parking had to, you know, had to be laid out so that we didn't violate any of the setbacks to the, to the, um, to the wetlands uh, in the rear section that's on the Amherst College land, actually. Um, it was a tight fit, and could we have made this a, a tent foot setback? Physically, it would have fit, but from a convenience point of view and driving through the parking lot, I think it would have been very tight, and you know we felt it was better to allow the maneuvering space for vehicles back there um, and I know nobody likes to hear that, but it's a fact that, you know, you got to allow these cars to be able to turn and get and maneuver through a parking lot. Otherwise, it becomes even more dangerous um, for pedestrians. Thank you. Kristen? I wonder if you could talk a bit about the wetland area, which I know you're putting the isolated wetlands in, and are they going to be vegetated with trees? Is there, is the, that just sort of a... The replication area? Yeah. 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 Um, so the replication area is a low area at the uh, low part of the site, um, outside of that parking area. And it's going to be, um, I think we have native trees and some shrubs planted in there, as, as well as a... Um, like a wetland type detention basin type um, seed mixture. Um, so we're basically letting it naturalize. Um, and uh, quite honestly, if, if we did nothing there, I think it would eventually turn into a wetland um, because there is pooling water on the Amherst College property. And I think that with the high groundwater in this area, that if you didn't mow it, for instance, it would kind of return to that natural state. Right now, it's being mown back there for lawn. Um, so this area in the bottom left corner is, is kind of non-usable. Um, and we kind of maneuvered the parking such that we could provide this area. And it turned out there's actually more than the two to one um, that's required for the replication of the isolated wetland. But we, we threw it in because it's in, in because you know from a practical standpoint it's it's not usable to the project. Um, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yes, I have a question about. I know you're right next to this nature preserve, and I know there's often standing water. It's kind of a really murky area, right. and I, I have a question about lighting and how much lighting there will be at night because I would I see animals and insects being attracted to that from that reserve. And at the same time, you need to weigh, you know, people can walk out of their house and see something. And I'm just wondering, you know, it's, your plan says the lights are on for 24-7 or all night. Is there a way to... I'm not... I'm I, not think sure. I, I think I read Did that. We, okay, I'm not... I don't remember that. Um, <laughs> the... Um, I'm trying to look at this plan. The, there's light posts that the... the in the center part of the site where there's the bigger blob, that light is in the island in the parking lot. Uh, so below that um, would be the replication area and then beyond would be the wooded area. To the, slightly to the right, there are two lights located on the southerly parking lot that would be, uh, you, they have an elongated um, pattern of lighting. The, the two on the bottom there, I, I, I really need a pointer. <laughs> Um, There's no pointer, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Oops. 
It's dead. Oh, okay. Um, so in terms of light, light casting backwards into the, into the wooded area, there's a really a minimal amount. If we look at the light levels, if you look at those numbers, you can't read them, but most of them say 0, 0.0. So the, the foot candles resulting from this lighting um, is going to be nil at the tree line, essentially. I do see Can that. you say that in lay terms? The, um, the light level, you won't, there's, there will be no measurable light level if you went to the tree line and, and, and used a light meter. Um, of course, you're going to see lighting you know, over on the site. But if you measured the light level at the tree line, you, according to this, which was prepared by lighting um, manufacturer, there won't be any, it, it would register zero. Could I, Chris, we do have a bigger one and squinting, I, I can sort of see the zeros there, but is there a way we could get this um, electronically so we could you, zoom um, in on it or? Then I've tried to look at it. What he's talking Do you want I me can to bring you the paper copy. I've tried to look at the electronic version, and it's, it's so blurry rough. that you can't. Yeah, and I know yeah. you have smaller yeah. copies in front of you, so it's a little more that difficult. Help you. I can bring it. I can go back to my office and get it, and you can pass it around if you'd like that. Um, Would that be helpful? Well, let me ask a couple more questions about lighting, because um, we'll see if. I think we, other you know, issues. we one of the um, uh, prerequisites town has and that you know we had the uh, lighting manufacturer produces like at the property line you know we want to have zero light level at the property line I think that's achieved on the three sides and obviously not at the on the street side you know because we've got these lights on the street here and the bus stop right um, this seems to be the night about light but um, <laughs> I have a question so if you're looking at that plan and where you said the main entrance is uh, mm -hmm. I also remember from the landscaping plan, I believe there's a tree there. And so there could you be, have right. provided us with parking lot lights, but are there going to be any lights on the building? Is there an overhang? Because right there I can see the entrance is... I think you're probably dark. going to have porch, porch lights at the doorways, you know, something of that nature. So we would need to see additional lighting that you're putting on your building. Okay. It's same concerns, downcast, okay. light, night sky, you know. Okay. Um, I don't think you're proposing any building mounted lights, but there would, I would imagine there'd be like, you know, a light, a porch light, you know, at, at entry something, doors. Right, because that okay. shows it's pretty dark going in your mm -hmm. front okay. main door there. Um, so that needs to be expanded on a light plan. And to repeat myself from earlier, um, the Kelvin is very important to me. I. I, you know, rather than the 5,700, the blue white, you know, they're leaning more towards four, but even lower if you even can consider. Lower, yeah. I, I do appreciate that a lot of this parking lot and the light mm -hmm. shine, it, it isn't seen from the roadway, um, you know, and it's pushed behind the building, but mm -hmm. I still think we should do, you know, due diligence in trying to keep it softer on the eyes yeah, and the wildlife okay. and we, 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 we can we can get that information and add it to the plan and kind of see what happens here great okay. so that will get added and then um resubmit it to us okay yes chris i was wondering if um the applicant could provide a photometric plan that actually showed the site because sometimes you do get um photometric plans where you see the edges of the parking lot and the edges yeah, of sidewalks and, and things, and it's easier to read it. Um, and um, so. I agree. And adding to that, that you just made me remember, so much of this project crosses over into the public way, and we have a bus stop out front, and we have a nice mm, pedestrian mall or whatever it is. Yeah. I can't remember from the site visit what street, what. Um, poles had street lights there, yeah, and if you're right. widening the road, are new ones going in? We can verify that, but I, I do remember I checked out the same thing one day driving by, and I think that there's a there's a utility pole on the other side of the street, opposite the proposed bus stop yeah. that has a a cobra head on it, and I don't know where the next light is, but I think it's further to the south, and then obviously you've got lights at um, College Street, 
but we can verify that information and um, um, and the, those lines, I can see some curvy lines depicting the edge of the paving on there, but it, I, it is very hard to see. It, it it's, is. They, they, it turned out very light on the plan that they produced, so we can enhance it. <laughs> and, and the light is a little sketchy, I noticed. It's hard to see, but if you look hard, you can see the walkways, and um, right next to the front of your building, they appear to be dark mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. and. Again, okay. thank you for the roadway improvements that you're willing to get involved with. Um, and I don't know where these lines, Chris, get drawn between the two, but the walkway that leaves your property heading north, heading up towards the intersection, which I assume there'd be pedestrians at all times walking there, you know, that is not really addressed up there. Again, I can't remember what street lights are there. Um, and it is the public way, so you know mm -hmm. we're encouraging people to walk. Right. Okay. I don't know if that's a joint effort, but so, I right. don't know if it's okay. bollards or another one of these lights. Okay. Does the board have any other um, questions regarding light? Why we're adding to our list? And we were thinking about having a small light on the side of the wall. So for uh, the say that again. On uh, the side of the. On the on the wall. On the uh, facing the street, you so that the building, on the building would, yeah, right? just very minimal, so the, there would be more lighting. But because of this is uh, uh, the Amherst comments, we try to do that as minimum as possible, and we are open for any suggestion. It's it's a balance, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. with the night sky compliance, yeah. they're great, except they don't throw a lot yeah. of light. Yeah. So uh, your designers will help yeah. you with this. All right. No problem. Thank you. Um, any other issues on the light, or can we sort of, you got all that, Chris, and, yes. I had one minor issue, which was, um, what color are the light poles and the light fixtures going to be? Are they going to be black, like they are downtown, or are they going to be aluminum color, or is there some other color? I, the town was using black, I believe. I believe so, yeah. So, I mean, we, <laughs> yeah, we'd copy that, I think, yeah. They probably have a black finish. Right. Yeah. All right. Light. Um, does someone want to bring up a, another topic, or we can go through? You know, it's helpful to look at the um, development application report. I have another question. Go. It's not on that That's on that okay. uh, list. I think. Uh, can you describe the nature of the edge between the property and the Amherst College conservation land? Um, up in that triangular green space, it's basically going to be um, left as it is. The wood line comes up to the property, and that would still be green lawn space, but I don't, I don't know if Amir has an intention to keep mowing it or just letting it revert to, you know, um, uh, successional wood, woodland species. Um, if, if you wanted to help it get a head start, I don't think we'd be adverse to planting some additional trees in that location, but uh, that's the only kind of open space on the site. The rest of it is pretty much you, there's minimal buffer from the parking, like on the south there, to the, to the, um, to the property line, and um, there's basically a tree line there, so that would be left intact. So a resident could easily simply walk from the parking lot into the, into the conservation area? I suppose so. Because there are several trails that come out right here. Right. Um, yeah, I know that, I think there's some other trails to the south of this property too. I've walked them many years ago, but um, yeah, there wouldn't, there's nothing right now prohibiting yeah. the access. No, but you're not suggesting a fence or a barrier or no. a berm or something like that. It's just going to be left mm, essentially as it is. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I'd like to bring up the waivers that you've requested. There's three of them. Uh, waiver of parking requirements, uh, which is section 7.9 of the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. You've uh, like to waiver the traffic impact statement and the sign plan. If you um, could address those three, why you would like to waive those. 
Um, okay, for the parking, um, I think the um, requirement is for two spaces per unit. We're asking for um, one space per unit. These are, I don't know if I should use the term, but more or less efficiency apartments. Um, kind of knowing that the, 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 the clientele that Amir is trying to attract, I think that um, most, would, most residents would probably have one car, if that. Um, it's on a bus line, um, very, you know, we were proposing the bus stop coming in the other direction as well, which was um, looked on favorably by PVTA. Um, so for parking, we're asking for the one space per unit and then it requires, which is six, comes to 62 spaces. And then the, um, based on the uh, formula for the commercial space, we were required to have four spaces for the commercial part of it. So that came to 66. And then we've got, we've got 67 spaces, one extra. Um, when we presented that idea to the um, building commissioner, he seemed very comfortable with the one space per unit, um, given this type of development. Um, so that's what we're proposing to have. Um, the traffic impact statement, I mean, again, we're on Southeast Street, coupled with the widening of the street. This street is a, is a you know, collector. Um, there's very good visibility on this street. It's a straight run. Um, there's really no obstructions in this area. So yeah, we didn't provide um, a traffic impact report. Um, we didn't come up with, um, you know, traffic trip generation figures. We could do that if you'd like. We could generate that to get an idea of, you know, incoming, outgoing vehicles at peak hours and so forth if, um, if that is uh, desired. It wouldn't take that much effort to do that. We'll look at the ITE um, trip generation um, manual and, and we could come up with that. Um, but we felt that, you know, it, it sh we didn't have, we, we didn't, we shouldn't need to go into a full traffic impact report. Again, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a village center. We're expected to have traffic in this area. There's shops, there's um, other conveniences. So people are traveling through here. Um, again, the streets are on all very good condition. Traffic seems to run smoothly and um, the, pro the project would, would realistically have a minimal impact on the level of service on the this, on this adjacent streets. Um, but we will generate some trip numbers if you'd like. Um, the sign, we're asking a waiver for that. There was, there was, Amir didn't intend that the project would have a sign. Um, so, uh, in fact, I, I was kind of curious whether or not you wanted to even have an, you know, some name of the project you know, a little, on a little plaque on the building or something. But. Um, at this point, I guess he doesn't have a, um, any um, desire to have like a, a, a project sign. Yeah, Do Chris, we... would you? I think if the owner would like to have a project sign in the future, if he has any idea of that, it would be good for the planning board to take that into consideration in a condition so that if such a sign were proposed, um, the applicant wouldn't have to come back to a public hearing, but mm -hmm. couldn't come back to a to public the... meeting with the planning board. And the other thing is um, they have two retail spaces, so I'm wondering if the retail spaces four. would, are there two or four retail spaces? Oh, two. What is two. in there? Two, two and two? Four parking spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Two. Yeah. Yeah, thank so you. it seems like the retail spaces would want to have signs also, and so that, that's another opportunity to come back to you to show you um, right. signs for the retail spaces. And there's also the issue of um, an address. And, uh, you know, at the other property that we looked at today on Main Street, there was a sign there that said, you know, it was kind of an index sign. And is that what you call it? You call it a directory sign, excuse me. But it will in the future show the address of the property, and then it shows the different uh, entities that are there. So there may be a, a need to have something like that. And if you don't yeah. include it in your conditions, then um, the applicant yeah, will have to come back and go through the whole site plan review process just so to get signs. So should it be potentially approved. two sign issue, like the, the sign that names or gives the address or whatever of your um, apartments, but then there's two retail spaces? 
I, th I think I don't know Amir would like to maybe reconsider that, but um, if it is written in the conditions, I don't think we'd have a problem with you know complying with the uh, with the sign by law and, and coming up with the design and having the um, um, is it the building commissioner that would ultimately approve that? Yeah. Right, and you don't have to bring that to us. Mm -hmm. That part, the details. It's just that it's a condition, and it's yeah. easier to come back. I think than so. To that makes sense. File out all yeah. the. Yeah. The, yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so, right, ask any of the other two. Yep. So, I would like to see the traffic impact study um, with an just to know the vehicle trips and the with an emphasis on pedestrian movement and bicycles also because there's a lot that goes on at that intersection. There's at least 14 I counted ways like you know um, driveways in that intersection of Northampton Bank and you know, the auto, you know, there's Cumbies and there's the auto um, inspection place and then there's some other driveways and they're kind of all over the place. And, you know, you have cars coming out right where the bus is pulling out that is going um, north and then you have a new bus stop and, you know, at peak traffic. And there's not a, most of the traffic I think is on Route 9 heading towards the university. I speak from deep, deep experience because I live on Southeast Street. But I, I just wonder about how vehicles move, how people cross the street with a bus, you know, how you bike down, and I, if this is the best place to put your, your driveway. Mm -hmm. okay. um, in, uh, addition, in addition yeah. to that, as, as, a, as an add-on, um, I think there's a visibility problem to the south. If you're pulling out of that driveway, the um, woods are uh, a problem in terms of visibility going, looking south to on the northbound traffic. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's pulling out of there going north, um, it, it might be an issue. So I think you should look at that as well. Okay, all right, thank you. So just um, adding to, I know the trip generation, that's not hard to do. Um, then there's these other factors that we're talking about and the road is changing. A lot of this is um, mm -hmm. projected and being designed because we're gonna widen the road and the whole right of way is being changed. Chris, I would hope that the town engineer, that Jason Skeels could also assist and give a little oversight on this because some of this is, it's the town right of way. Yeah. So there are really two options. One is to um, have a letter written by a traffic engineer that describes what the trip generation for this site would be. Mm -hmm. um, and talks about some of the issues that you've brought up, including site distance and blocking of sight lines and things like that. And the other would be a full-blown traffic report, which requires counting uh, traffic on all the streets in the vicinity and then determining whether there needs to be um, improvements to nearby intersections. I think that's probably a bridge too far for this project, I, I but I think having the letter describing um, what trips you're expecting to come out of the property and some of the issues that may um, arise as a result of numerous entrances and exits, those things could be uh, addressed in a letter from a traffic engineer. So. Knowing what I know about that subject, I agree with you. Um, I don't think the volume that we're talking about here, which the whole point of a traffic impact is not that it's a busy road, which it is, it's a connector, but how much of an impact this project would have on daily trips. The other parts are important um, in consideration of you know pedestrians and making it you know friendly for bikes and all that. But um, I would be content seeing uh, trip generation done, and that's a starting point because that gives you the numbers of where to sort of decide: do we need to go further? Is that mm -hmm. sure? I think that makes sense. Um, I mean, from from my perspective, I'm not a traffic engineer either, but you know, we've got a very well-controlled intersection to the north at Route 9 with crosswalks. Yeah. You've got lights, uh, traffic lights there. You've got, I believe, there's a um, pedestrian crossing um, uh, signalization. Also, uh, we're also adding a crosswalk here, as you can see, at the, between the two, exi the existing bus stop and the new one um, that's identified. It's set back from the two bus stops, so pedestrians have, a, or drivers have a a uh, clearer view of pedestrians crossing because they're not jumping out in front of a bus, et cetera. Um, so that was a requirement that the town put forth that we we have a crosswalk in that location. Um, and I guess, you know, obviously we're happy to do that. 
um, to help improve the safety in this area. Um, you know, obviously, sometimes people run across the street in different locations, but you know, we are providing that that you know safe um, crossing from one side to the other. Just to keep in mind, you know, it's a, a mid-block crosswalk. I know, which I is know. not ideal. Right, right. Um, They're really high on that. Northampton drives RR, me crazy. The RRF. <laughs> Mm -hmm. these, the flashers yeah. right now. Um, right, so I think what happens is line of sight, and widening the road actually does speed up traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It is, um, it helps to have that controlled intersection right. to the right. north. Um, Hopefully the people- The other way is the issue when they're coming out of that right. intersection that they have the urge to. Part of the road widening, the town told us that they desire to have um, it's 34 feet wide from exactly. curb to curb with a 24 foot wide, you know, two 12 foot lanes in each direction. And then the town wanted to add, you know, five foot bicycle lanes in this stretch. So I don't know if that's going to continue in the future, but you know, it's, it's, it's intended to be, um, a com be able to accommodate a five foot bicycle, um, lane on each side. Um, so hopefully coupled with, additional pavement markings, et cetera, it's going to be a little bit better controlled um, in terms of traffic and hopefully that, you know, people will be slowing down because, you know, they're approaching an intersection. Right. Yeah. Just to confirm, you said 24? So you're talking about it's 12-foot lanes. Was that from the town? Yeah. Uh, oh, that okay. was what the town um, requested or required, a 30-foot, 30 34-foot total pavement width. Interesting. Um, so in that letter, when you're including the trip generation, mm -hmm. if it could also, um, back to Michael's point, when you're pulling out of the driveway, and overall I am glad that the driveway is further away from the intersection as mm -hmm. possible because that's a safety. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. could you take a look at how the line of sight does look as you Absolutely. look to the south? And sure. can, is there yep. good visibility? Great. Absolutely. We'll go and document that and take some photos as well. Any um, other questions on the traffic? One thing I do yeah. want to just point out, in the few, uh, Amir owns the, the uh, four properties on the other side of the mm -hmm. street. Mm -hmm. At some point, he is intending to do another project over there and it will eliminate some of those residential driveways. So there, there'll actually be a, a few f fewer yeah. curb cuts on that side of the street. Sure. Any other traffic, or does anyone have any parking? Oh, do you want to talk? Go ahead. What, are, at the proposed driveway, what happens to the sidewalk south of the, you're, you're putting in a sidewalk going, running north from the driveway to Florence Savings Bank. Mm -hmm. What happens to the south on that little bit? There's just a curb ramp there, and ultimately it might continue at a future date, if anything happens with the town decides to build more sidewalk on um, Southeast Street, I think we're, we're, our proposal is to stop it at the at the driveway currently. But they just finished it the other side. You know, the There's a sidewalk on the other side yeah. of the street that goes up to Colonial Village. Correct. Thank heaven. That, does that finally. Go all the way to <laughs> yes. I, oh, yes. it does. That's okay. A clarification. All right. Great. Okay. Um, I know I have some parking questions. Does anyone have parking <clears throat> questions? <laughs> um, so I agree with you with industry trends on parking um, and the, the two for one would be overkill. Um, and you also feel that that number, you've chosen that number because this is the reason why the special permit is involved because your mm -hmm. setback is the six feet, where if you had gone four more feet to 10, that would eliminate that. But I assume this is impacting your parking plan. Um, if you could touch on which ones are compact spaces and which ones are standard and any other thoughts you have with that. Sure. Yeah, and actually that's a good point. We had to um, provide some compact parking spaces in order to get that extra two feet, if you will, to just be able to reduce the pavement by two feet just in order to get this layout to fit. So the compact parking spaces are on the um, far left-hand side, facing the woods, the Amherst College property. Okay. 
on the south, very south side facing the Amherst College property and on the north side facing the building wing. So basically the uh, compact spaces are kind of around the outside. Yeah. And the rest are standard. Correct. And you balance that as you were trying to fit it to the site. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? David? David? Yeah. No. Um, I, I have two, two questions. One, on the south, south, how, how will it drain on the south west and the southwest corner of the parking lot? And then my, the question that, that uh, my second question is, did, did you consider, would you, or would you consider um, including uh, electric, an electric charging space or two? Two would be really, you know, it would, would, would be the, the number um, uh, in the, in the, among them, among the, these. But I'm also interested in the, how it drains. Does it just drain into the woods or will it drain back into some you know, it, system? Well, for the drainage, all the runoff from the paved parking area is, is direct, is caught in catch basins and piped to an underground detention basin in that southern parking lot area. Uh, it's going to go through a treatment chamber and then into the underground detention basin for attenuation. And then there's an outlet, uh, overflow outlet, which discharges back to the, out, out of the underground basin to, in a, westerly direction to the back to the wetland or actually would it, it would discharge into the replicated area but that, that will happen from the catch basin system it yeah happen underneath correct the, not from the surface no there's no surface runoff directed outside of the um the parking areas it's all caught if you will uh -huh. yeah. can you put up l4 or um yep Can we zoom on that southern, is that? So, um, in that southern parking area, you can see the kind of heavy dashed line. Yeah. That's the underground detention basin. There's actually, there's actually a, oh, thank you. Well, it, hey, does your finger oh, work great. on that? Great, good. <laughs> can we pan? No. <laughs> ah. Well, good. so you can see kind of the, these little circles on the plan. Yeah. Um, there's a catch basin in the far north corner of the parking lot. There's a catch basin to the south. Um, the one from the north run, is connected. They both, both catch basins discharge to a, this double circular um, symbol. That's the stormwater treatment chamber where oils and sediment is filtered out. And then that connects into the underground basin. When that fills up, water will you know, discharge um, back out toward the um, replicated wetland area. There's a second um, subsurface detention basin, a rectangular shape on the west side under the parking lot. That is for the, um, we're directing the roof drainage into that to help it discharge. Well, to slow it down and, and let it discharge. Um, it's a simple drainage system in terms of like there's only two catch basins required but it's really not that big of a paved area um, so there's a there's a ridge across the pay uh, the parking lot so the north part of the parking lot drains to the north and the south drains to the south but it's all caught it, this is all curbed so we're, we're um, not allowing water to sheet off of the paved areas thank you any and then the electric charging spa oh. spaces, oh, oh. Would, you, would that be a consideration? Would you, I guess we're talking about the electric yes, charging spaces, uh, um, potentially. I, yeah, actually, uh, we have, uh, we were th thinking about uh, designating some for the uh, resident hmm. who had the electric call that they wanted to do that. Another plan is that also at Auto Express, I'm thinking of, you know, providing some mm -hmm. for the car that, you know, on an electric charge. But there, for sure there would be some designated mm. area okay. parking space for That's the electric car. Uh, also for the two to one was that, you know, we have been uh, going through this for years with Chris and building inspector. And uh, the bus stop that you see on the other side, 
I donated the land when they were improving the uh, Southeast Street and uh, to just make sure that we would have a uh, bus stop to basically encourage people to use the public bus. So that's why I think one to one is, would be adequate. Mm -hmm. Just one other tra uh, transportation issue. Is there going to be a bike rack? And yes. Where would that be placed? Yes. Um, well, this plan is showing at the, um, at the entrance to the building, you see the little diagonal pay piece of paving with the one, I can't count them, the five, five, there's five bike loops shown hmm. um, there for, you know, to park bicycles. And that's uncovered? Correct. Okay. Yep. Five uncovered. And if demand was there, you could sure. find another space to put another yep. one. Yeah, we could find So this. you don't want bikes just getting, you know, right? Yeah, go ahead. So when people are moving into this building, what do they do? Because it seems like there's no place to unload bags or packages or anything like that. It seems like it's just parking spaces and then a door. Um, and then there's only one elevator for 60 people in the building, which seems sort of... Uh, the elevator was not required for the, when you have a three-story building. We put it as a convenient for the people. Could you, could you show me where that is? I can't... The elevator is, is right at the L-shape. In the... In the um, well, Roy will... Maybe Roy can point that out on the plan. Yep. I, I, I was just, it was just pointed out for me, thanks. If you press the button, does anything help you? So in, in the um, meeting of the two wings in the central part, there's a uh, there's an office, a, a management rental office. There's a small laundry for the residents. Oh, there is no, oh, okay, I thought there was. We got deleted, okay. Small lounge, okay, and then an elevator in that, in that core. Could you repeat, there is no laundry? Because it, or? Each, each unit has its own laundry. So it's not okay. what we're looking at. The, the laundry is no longer. Speak in, um, sure. Each unit has its own washer dryer. Okay, so that space that says laundry here is now going to be lobby. a lounge. Okay. Lobby, now. lobby lounge. Okay. So, is there any place to unload, to pull up a car and unload? I can't. I... Well, speak into this and a point if you have to, I'm sorry. That lobby by the elevator is going to basically provide a space for people to just basically unload and off. I mean, I'm just saying, if you pulled up in your moving van or your, I mean, is, where would you do that? Just, oh yeah. There's actually a couple of other, there's actually a couple of other egress doors, but the main door again is here, so I would envision that a, a you know, a, a van could pull up here if it needed to and unload out the back and get to this door but there's also an egress door at this stairwell and there's a door right here at this stairwell so okay. there are other ways for people to to access the building and I mean, are their keys going to be able to open those doors I would assume yeah or card key uh, so they'd be locked obviously um, but residents would be able to you know get into those doorways as well so Janet's got me thinking now. We have two retail spots, and I don't know what they're going to be. You can talk about what you're designing or th imagining, but I would assume most retail spaces have deliveries. Um, where, you know, if they pull in where the driveway is and they mm. then are dolly carting it up, you know, up to the door. Because I know there's no, it didn't appear that there were um, egresses or doors from the main hallways into your retail no. space. So how, what's the plan with the retail deliveries? It would be a, a sim, uh, exactly the same way that uh, we have it in downtown, that you know, from the front door. And there is a sidewalk that goes along the uh, building. Actually, can we use our new mouse? Oh. <laughs> well. These are these are the doors right here. These to the retail. Yeah. So I'm not sure how you 
you're envisioning that um, they perhaps have to pull out on the side yeah. of the road yeah. for a short time to unload. And there's Where no back they? door to the retail. And then Dolly. Yeah. Um, no, there's goods. no back door. Yeah. So, so I, where would they park? I guess they, well, I think he's, we're saying that the just by the, have to park on the street. The, uh, street or the potentially on the, the street. Parking lot and then, you know, they have to basically, whoever is doing it, they have to. Well, it's tough because there's a bus mm -hmm. stop and then after the, to the north of the bus stop, we start getting very close to the intersection, mm -hmm. which that's not good. Um, so it would have to be below the bus stop is, um, I imagine that you know you can come through the right of the driveway and just you know or go to the back of the building, whatever it is. My envision about the retail space is that you know, it would be low demand. Uh, uh, that's that it wouldn't have that much of a loading or offloading. That is what I don't want in you know, a high traffic uh, retail. I don't know what who is going to come and then what they would be doing. But that's what I know. I'm imagining that, you know, I would be renting it to the people who have very, uh, not very, uh, so much demand on the loading and offloading. What kind of utilities are you putting in? Like, could there be a restaurant or, you're the, no, or is it more no, like no office space? Office space. Th no. That's what you're thinking. Okay, so office Something space. Something that, you know, wouldn't have that much of an impact, so much impact. Okay. Um, any other questions with the loading or doors or parking area? Is everyone? Um, yeah, go ahead, Jack, please. So uh, the uh, town engineer has not reviewed the stormwater report. I think the town engineer has reviewed stormwater in the context of the Conservation Commission review, but that happened several months ago. Um, I don't think he's had a chance to review these drawings. We haven't gotten any comments from him. I think that letter was dated like October 2018 or something. Is that the one in our packet? That's the correct. Uh, the letter in your packet is from October. Yes, that's right. And has the, have the plans been significantly changed since then? Um, basically, the site hasn't changed, but it was, we were kind of working out what was going to happen in the, in the town right of way. So speaking of that and the grading plan, um, there's concern and issues with how much fill is going to have to be put on the lot and in the town way to get a flat surface for the build. Um, is that an evolving thing right now? Is that known or? No, that's, that's known. Um, okay. the, the building is approximately the finished floor of the building is uh, two feet eight inches higher than Southeast Street. Two feet eight inches higher. Yeah. Um, is I'm was looking at the architectural. Is there a basement or or not? Is there only utility basement? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, where the elevator is. Uh, yeah. In that vicinity. Exactly okay. right. I can okay. point that out to you if you like. Yeah, because I, I was thinking with the high groundwater, you're going to have a basement there. I was like, it didn't make sense. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. So know. if Phil goes into the town public way, Chris, does the town council have to approve that part? Because they're, yeah. The town and council will have to approve any of the improvements that are being done within the right of way. Okay. Um, the improvements that are immediately in front of the building and I think also in the roadway, but I'm not sure exactly about that. I would think the roadway, okay. Go ahead, Jack. Um, on, on a related matter to the parking and the drive, uh, we're also looking for the fire department approval, okay. So in terms of, you know, fire truck access and and other issues, I guess, would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. So did we agree that the town engineer would look at the storm, revisit that, and revisit his memo? Yeah. I think the town engineer needs to look at this whole set of plans okay. and give us his opinion on them, um, even if he just refers back to his old letter and says all of these things have been taken care of, or some statement about this current set of plans. and. 
Mr. Liu can, um, what should I say, uh, promote that idea by going to the town engineer and talking to him and saying, please submit a letter to the planning board that gives comments on this set of plans. Sometimes the applicant has more effect than the other town staff. <laughs> How can that be? Uh, um, so we got the, the site management plan, which I do believe we have. Yeah, that's, um, the only issues, so, uh, are you planning to manage the property or are you going to outsource it? Outsource it. You are. Okay. So a note here from you is right at the applicant should submit a complaint response plan as part of the management plan. Um, I don't know if you, they talked to you about that. What does that entail, Chris? Well, you actually have one for your next applicant and I could give it to Mr. Uh, McChee as an example of what would be acceptable. It's part of the um, rental registration program that you need to have somebody available to um, respond to any complaints that come forward. And I also think that um, the app management plan should clarify that the applicant wants to hire a management company to manage the property and he should name that, um, that entity that's going to manage the property. Does that sound helpful if you get an example? Yeah. Okay, um, <coughs> construction logistics plan, um, has anything been submitted on that? That's something that you might consider putting into a condition that a, a construction logistics plan be submitted before the building permit is issued and that's helpful particularly in these um, very tight sites where it's not clear where uh, staging would happen, it's mm -hmm. not clear where contractors would park, it's not clear where, you know, the machines and the material would be stored because the whole site is going to be under construction. So I think it's going to be an important piece here to make this project run smoothly. Okay, and you said submit that before? Before the uh, building permit, I think, um, yes, submit it before the building permit. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that, you know, there's, there's room to stage on the site too and with the um, the option of using properties on the other side of the street for potentially storage of material, since Amir owns those lots, he's willing to to do that to free up space, if you will. Right, Chris. So I would recommend that the applicant and his um, consultants talk to the building commissioner about what would be the ideal um, construct lo construction logistics plan before they submit it. Just make sure that um, they're hitting all the things that he would be concerned about and um, then when they submit it to you, it will be adequate. Okay. Um, if you could just touch on the trash, where the dumpsters are and how the truck would come in. Now that I've got this fancy thing. <laughs> so, Yay, mouse. Um, this is the uh, dumpster and recycling location. So trucks would enter, maneuver around here to be able to pick up um, front loading and then you know do a little backup and then you know exit easily this way um, is that a twice a week thing or how often do you think that would be we haven't decided on that depends on, on what is the demand so. I, I would imagine it would at least be a weekly, weekly. yeah, yeah pickup doesn't that get put on one of the forms, Chris? Oh, this, the management, is it? It usually does get put on the management plan. Yeah. So that would be helpful to have that information, who's picking up the trash and how many times a week. So this one needs to be more detailed, the management plan form. Um, well, they want it. For the trash and recycling. 
also so it's sort of the same with the snow removal. Right. Like so you're looking you know, for add a, more right. who who yeah. you're gonna I contract think, with. I think okay. we need to add the snow um, does anyone have any questions about landscaping, uh, maintenance plan, landscaping? Yeah, this, this is kind of about landscaping. Um, the, um, the facade of the building is, is pretty massive, and, and if it's only six feet away from the, uh, the right-of-way, my question is about the width of the sidewalks. Uh, in, you know, in downtown, when you have full, bit, full um, uh, uh, zero a lot line uh, buildings, the sidewalks are quite wide, you know. I don't know, I'm not sure what the numbers are, eight feet, something like that. Eight these sidewalks scared. look significantly s smaller than that. Do you know what the width of these sidewalks is? Um, I believe they're six feet. Six feet? Six feet? Yeah. I mean, there's a significant number of shoppers and stores downtown, obviously. Um, right, I'm thinking more from an aesthetic point of view than a, a, um, a business point of view. Um, because of the mass of the building, uh, which is much larger than anything else in the area. Uh, it seems to me that wider sidewalks might be uh, more attractive uh, if it's not uh, uh, a problem with, with the right of way or the, the town. I will add a DOT standard is now five feet. Um, anything over that, of course, is better. Six mm -hmm. is better, but if you and I know there's a cost associated with the sidewalk, but more than the cost, it is the because this is. Amherst Commons, it, more than a cost, it is because it's Amherst Commons. We really have to, we submitted, Mike uh, submitted three uh, rendering about what it's going to look like, and they told us this is the one that they picked, and we tried to, and they asked that, you know, everything should be minimal. The, who picked? Chris? The, the plan, yeah. planning staff kind of favored this okay. yeah. layout, but, I mean... Not, you know, not a specific sidewalk width yeah. per se, but if, I, you know, I mean, ultimately, if, um, yeah, if, it if is you, you know, if we want eight, eight foot feet, walks, yeah, I don't, you know, eight feet. that's something that Amir would consider if you wanted to increase this, but I, I don't know if it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, it's balancing use with, yeah. with bike lane, you know, that's mm -hmm. sometimes the, cons uh, eight <clears throat> foot, eight to 10 is like a bike trail. For a bike Just trail, a, yeah. Um, yeah. A multi-use path. Mm -hmm. um, and where the, if bike lanes are going in. So is the town way, to, you know, thought about? So the town, um, it, it was just um, some staff people who spoke with Mr. McGee and his consultant about various scenarios that they had for this piece of town property that's right in front of his building. Mm -hmm. And this configuration seemed like a good configuration with the size of a plaza. We didn't really talk about the width of sidewalks. Um, so what they might do is look at the sidewalk width on the other side of the street that the town just put in and try to match that, at least for the sidewalk that runs right along the edge of the road. I think that would make sense. My guess is that would be a five at max, but if six was willing to be a go, I'd rather see six than five. We can, we can take a measurement. Amir thinks this, the new sidewalks on the other side might only be four feet. I'm uh, afraid they might be, yeah. but um, <laughs> when were they redone? Like a few years ago. Okay, well, and DOT, it's recent that they've changed their recommendation from four to five, mm -hmm. so that could be what happened. Um, so we have a long list of stuff that oh, we need. Also, um, public comment to be asked? Yeah, we're getting right. So um, just we have a lot to come back is what I'm going to say. So we're obviously not going to finish this tonight because so there'll be another chance to look at the new information that comes in and anything that we're forgetting or, you know, hasn't come to mind at this point. It's been a lot of coverage. <laughs> um, yes, Chris. There's one more thing that I thought of which might be useful to you, and that would be um, either a sketch or a cross-section or something between this building and the Florence Savings Bank because That's Florence is a pretty big building. It's in this vicinity, and it would give you a sense of what the mass of this building is in regard to other buildings in the area. 
bring across. Okay, great. And that's on the list then. Um, okay, so at this point, if the board is good for now, we're going to open up to public comment. Um, we have to do a little juggling because you guys will still have to answer questions, but we'll need one chair open so that people can come up and ask their questions. So I don't know how you guys want to do it. Um, okay. Thank you. <laughs> how many, can I just see a show of hands? How many people do have questions that they'd like to come forward and ask? One, two. So I see two hands. Okay, so um, uh, Ms. Pam, if you uh, want to come up and um, just state your, your name and your address because I assume you're here as a resident. Yes. Um, <laughs> Dorothy, Dorothy Pam, 229 Amity Street. Um, I'm still confused about the, um, public, the public land or the, the town-owned right-of-way. And um, the building is going to come right up to the absolute edge of it. Is that correct? Uh, the, six, six, six feet, and the zoning requirement is seven. So they're asking for... Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, did I say... Oh. This is going to be a long night. Ten, it's ten to twenty is what mm -hmm. is in the zoning. And at first they had said zero, but then it's been altered through redesign, and it's now at six feet mm -hmm. back. Because you, the picture had two sidewalks, one near the street and one right along the edge of the building. And at, you have people with first floor apartments. I mean, I think you just can stand on that sidewalk and look in the windows and see what they're doing. Um, their doors are up, uh, also right up there on the street, or are the only entrances from the back? From the back, okay. Um, also, the little half round, half circle that you called a public gathering place, I find that a difficult phrase because it's right in front of the retail stuff, and um, I, I don't imagine any tenants ever gathering there. Um, I just think it would be strange. I just, I, I guess there's no, it, I see that the, the plan does not provide green. It doesn't provide any really sp real space, which would be in the inside of the crook of the um, building, the, where the parking is, where people could actually sit in a chair or chat with each other, um, because the wetlands area is full of trees, and I guess it's wet. Um, I'm not sure. It just seemed very... Um, antisocial um, and kind of sterile to me. So um, it looks very massive and unfriendly. It kind of, I mean, I, I kind of like the design in a way, but it reminded me of old factories in Hartford. So that's my comment. Thank you. Um, do you have any comments? I, I, I just want to ask for clarification. Um, Mr. Connie, you can come and sit. I just. We talked about a common gathering space. Are there benches or anything? I couldn't remember if there's any landscape um, furniture. There aren't, but I don't. I don't think that you know. Um, again, it, it, it's a management issue. Amir's agreed to take responsibility of the maintenance of that area for the. You know, it's in the town right of way. He's currently mowing there. So he's proposing to continue mowing there and look after the trees that are planted. Um, and we've got the uh, plaza. I don't, you know, we'd have to discuss whether he'd be willing to put furniture out there. Or, you know, we could potentially look at putting in permanent seating. Right now, there is none. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Vincent O'Connor, uh, 175 Summer Street, from Amherst. So, um, I have a number of areas um, and, and some minor comments uh, based on my um, service on town committees and so forth. So uh, maybe I'll just start off with a simple one. Um, when I last talked to the building commissioner, he was in the process of his initial discussions with the North Square folks about how they're going to provide for the snowfall off the roofs of their buildings. Um, so 
I think rather than wait until the buildings are half com these buildings are half completed, it might be a good idea for the planning board as the permitting authority to insist that there be um, some reasonable discussion of, of how, where the snowfall off the roofs are going to fall and therefore how the site is going to accommodate the snowfall. So that, that's, one, that's one issue. I, I, with regard to the comments, uh, the previous public comment, um, and my own concerns, I would refer the board to section 11.2403, which, which says that there should be adequate recreational facilities, open space, and amenities. Um, I think that there is, um, for the number of housing units here, um, there is not sufficient of any of these um, things that are required on, by that section. And I think it is the, the operation of this section which I think might cause the board to consider um, by some way of reducing the number of units to be more consistent with the um, a more appropriate use of the space and a more appropriate facilities for the potential tenants. Um, I was chair of the bicycle committee, the committee on bicycling for six years from 1988 to 1994. And I can just tell you that the number of bicycle parking spaces in this era of five for a building of this size is not adequate. And the location of those spaces in front of the building is really not a good idea. Those spaces should be in, in some kind of a sheltered area um, with an overhang in back of the build, building where the parking is. Um, because that will, you don't want to advertise bikes for the stealing, and so it, you have many more eyes on bicycles if they're, if you might have for, for the visitors to the uh, commercial area, you might want to have a couple of, you know, a few spaces in front, but there should be about maybe 10 spaces in back or some similar number. Um, if, but again, if the number of units are reduced and um, then, you know, there might be fewer spaces required. I live in an apartment that is probably less than 500 square feet that has two bedrooms. Um, it, there is no place to put a bicycle. And certainly bicycles should not be stored in the hallways of a building with this many housing units. Um, even, whether th even if it was a two-floor building, it would not be a good safety idea to have people putting their bicycles in hallways. So adequate storage and parking spaces for bicycles is important. Um, now I think we get to some of the real difficulties uh, with the proposal. Um, in, in Amherst, I think with 62 units, you're going to end up with somewhere between 90 and 120 residents. Um, and the way to do a quick check on that is through the town clerk's office as to how many folks reside in the three five-story buildings that have been built that have a similar types of housing units, which is uh, Kendrick Place, One East Pleasant Street, and Olympia Place. And the way to tell how many cars are required, and I can give you the number for the first year for Kendrick Place, there were 57 parking permit applications because Kendrick Place is in the downtown and only had four parking spaces inside, two for zip cars and two for HP spaces. Um, and of the 38 units in Kendrick Place, I think the first year they had only rented out about 30. So, um, 57 applicants, 30 housing, uh, for 30 housing units that were rented the first year. The, the uh, collector's office, I believe, will have those statistics for all those buildings 
for Olympia Place, the, the numbers will be in the possession of the UMass Parking Authority because folks who reside in Olympia Place have to get a parking permit from uh, the university because there's not very much parking there. And, and in fact, they have to be related to the university, which allows them to get a parking permit from the UMass Parking Authority. So, um, and I really think that w there needs to be some kind of a professional study as to how many residents we, I'm, I listened to presentations for the five-story buildings claim there was only gonna be one resident per, per bedroom. In a college town, given the likely cost of rent for a one-bedroom apartment, that's not a realistic um, thing. Uh, and in fact, on weekends, you have visitors, um, you have family members coming, and in that parking lot, unless the apartments are gonna be fully furnished as they are in some of the other proposals, you're going to have to have spaces for people with trucks um, bringing the furnishings um, to, to their apartments and, a, and, and, a, um, and an elevator capable of, of elevating those, uh, those furnishings to the various floors. So um, with respect to, I've already had my say about lighting, but with respect to recycling, I do think it would be useful <laughs> as we're moving into a new era to um, see whether there, there can be some composting facility available, but also that the recycling requi be required to be separated because as, as many of you know, um, the United States recycling loads are being rejected all over Asia because they're contaminated and they're contaminated because when you don't, when you don't separate um, recyclables, what happens is you end up with a lot of garbage. And I live in an apartment complex where our recycling bin um, it becomes a second uh, garbage disposal facility. So but I, there has to be some kind of a professional study um, regarding how many persons will live in this building because that will tell you how many cars there will be and you can again check with the, the buildings that have been recently constructed with similar types of thing. So um, and I was happy to hear about the charging proposals charging electrical uh, for electric vehicles. My Additional comment, all three of the five-story buildings that have been proposed with similar types of housing um, things, n not a single one has any, um, uh, photovoltaic arrays or anything that would g even generate enough electricity to heat the hot water in the building. And I think that I think when you're in a hole, as I think we are, with respect to the environment, the first thing you do is you stop digging. And what I mean by stopping digging is permitting buildings that contribute to the problem, but do not contribute to the solution. So I do think that the board should consider requiring that there be um, some meaningful solar um, gathering that to serve a, an important, useful function for the building. This is not a building that's gonna be built in 2020, and then we're gonna turn the clock back and it'll end its useful life in, in 1960. The building is gonna go forward, and as it does, um, our problems with um, CO2 and other things released into the environment are going to get worse, not better. And the building should not contribute to the worsening of the problem. Um, so um, finally, with respect to the bylaw itself, 
that um, permits this mixed use building which has become sort of a fiction because there is a building that was permitted that for as a mixed use building which has as as yet I have not seen any commercial use on the ground floor and so what I would like the board to consider as part of its review of this application is look at the section of the bylaw that talks about mixed use because there's no definition of what the mixed use is which it seems to me since planning boards are not presidential bodies like the Supreme Court um, the board can take a look at that statute and say well there ought to be at least the same percentage of commercial space in this building as there are in other buildings of a similar nature that had been previously permitted. Or we think that mixed use buildings should, in other words, not just a postage, uh, yes, a, a place to sell uh, US postage or something, but there has to be some, I think the board ought to really consider looking at the statute and saying, in order for this statute to be meaningful, some minimal percentage of the floor space of a structure has to be devoted to commercial space. And I think it's within the board's authority to do that, but I think also whenever the board permits, if it chooses to do so, a mixed use structure the board ought to insist that before, to avoid um, what has happened in the past, that the board ought to insist that there be a, before any residential occupancy permit is issued by the building commissioner, that the commissioner and the board be presented with a signed commercial contract for the use of the commercial spaces so that we don't have a series of mixed-use buildings where the occupancy permit for the residential use is granted and the, and the commercial spaces sit vacant and give the impression to the public that this, that this is an apartment building that where in fact an apartment building and the mixed use statute is a fiction that is being used to per permit apartment buildings in locations and of sizes and so forth and of nature of things that would not be permitted under the apartment building statute. Look at the apartment building statute, look at this statute and see if in fact what I have said is is not a problem. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Uh, we have another comment, please. Oh. Oh. Sit down, catch your breath. I'm okay. Um, <laughs> Maureen Adams. You, yes, you've woken us up, Maureen. <laughs> <Yeah>. Pardon? <laughs> you woke us up. <laughs> oh, good. I woke myself up as well. So um, before I get to speaking about handicap spaces, I do want to say that I lived on Southeast Street for a long time down at uh, Fort Hill. So I know how the road narrows as it goes under that bridge. I know how people zoom up and down that road with no expectation there'll be anything until you get to the actual cross lights. I also, I don't use Auto Express very much, but I do use a 7-Eleven and I try to fill up my car there from time to time. Let me tell you, trying to get out of that driveway, either to turn east, I mean to turn north, or God save us if we had to go across traffic to go south, uh, I am not convinced by all the plans that this is going to be a safe area, particularly if the plan is 
and I'm, I was very glad for the honesty of the proposer uh, to have development on the other side of the road as well. There's also a large entrance a little bit farther down Southeast Street to Colonial Village. It's kind of, and it's used quite a bit. So you have Colonial Village, you have the Auto Express, you have the filling station, uh, you have this new unit, and you have uh, traffic that is not yet accustomed to this being so built up. So I am very concerned about the traffic issues, number one, having used them myself and tried to negotiate them. Uh, I have heard nothing at all about handicapped uh, units. I don't know if that's required, but uh, it certainly is desirable. And uh, even young professionals can be handicapped, but doesn't have to get as old as I am to uh, need that kind of unit. Which leads me to the issue of apartments. Somehow, I mean, I'm sorry, to the, of elevators. I am a little shaken by falling. Um, it somehow makes me think of European hotels where there's only one elevator and people are trying to get up and down before going down very long, uh, narrow passageways to get to their rooms. Uh, a single, uh, it, it may be that there are very kind of uh, jogger friendly uh, residents that we're hoping for, but I would hope for at least two elevators on each end of the building uh, because three stories uh, is a bit of a climb when one's coming back with groceries and bags from school and other things. So um, that's not an objection so much as a, it's, it's a concern. Um, I'm also very concerned, uh, as other people have said, about there being no outdoor amenities. I mean, it, it makes me feel if I were going to live there, I'd need to be really nerdy. But I, I go to work, and I come back, and I go to sleep, and there'd be no place to sit out in the sun. Uh, there would be, you know, uh, it, 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 it doesn't feel user-friendly not to have green space, residential space, places to kind of put up a beach chair or, you know, to put a grill outside. And uh, it's, uh, it's because it's so tight and it's because there are so many units. So I would encourage a reduction of scale. I'm also concerned about the issue of, of uh, storage. As someone who moved from graduate school to an efficiency apartment to another efficiency apartment, if you don't have parents to leave stuff with, and there's no place to put stuff, and you're in an efficiency apartment, you're in real trouble. And I would ask the planning board to think about that. Solar panels, this is an incredible opportunity to put solar panels on. I know in town that uh, we had uh, uh, agreements about town buildings of a certain scale, but I would very much like to see the planning board encourage this. We're seeing a lot of active development. We're not seeing solar panels. Uh, the, uh, you, the, it's going to generate a lot of electricity and uh, I, I, uh, I've i made my point. And then the last one is, uh, I heard the answer about professional use for the retail space as a response to the lack of pull-up space for delivery of supplies. But it occurs to me that a 62 or even fewer residents uh, with very small space, people will want to go down to a restaurant, they will be wanting to go down to a cafe. Those would be the likelier occupants of the retail space, and they'll need delivery space. So I, I don't see this as an issue to be shrugged off by the board. So those are my concerns, and I'll try to make it to my seat in one piece. Thank you. Um, are there any of those issues you'd like to address? You don't have to address them, but if there's just any no, that you As far as the uh, handicap, yes, we have a few units that is designed for the handicap specifically. Could you say, say that again? For the handicap. How many? Units? The question was handicapped uh, apartments. The, the code requires those. There are three. Three. And they're in there. 
and handicap parking spaces are also there. I believe we have four handi four handicap spaces on the um, on the site plan. Um, as far as the uh, green was concerned, is, is we have this. Uh, uh, my intention is that you know we would uh, take advantage of this uh, and encourage uh, people to take advantage of the Amherst Commons the, that is there. And we are going to have benches, but we did it minimal because, you know, we were wanted to have the feedback from the other uh, people to t basically tell us, you know, to what extent we would like, they would like us to go. And that was the reason. It, obviously, we would like to have a benches, and we did propose it to in the beginning. But it, we were encouraged to just basically make it to minimum as possible. That was the reason. But, you know, we, there is a plenty of a space there, and that was the whole, basically, the idea that, you know. I'm, so, I'm sorry, could you, could you clarify what you mean by that? When you say the Am Amherst Common, do you mean the space in front of the building? Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, does the board have, uh, is there any other public here who have questions? Is it something new, Mr. O'Connor? And I'm sorry again, Vince O'Connor, 175 Summer Street. Um, with re the importance of making sure that the number of units and the number of residents really fit this location is um, I think, with respect to parking, I think can, can't be overstated because unlike some of the buildings that have been constructed in the center of Amherst, in this location, there are no surrounding residential streets with parking permit locations where the residents of this building or their, um, or their visitors could park. You cannot park on Southeast Street. You cannot park on College Street or Belchertown Road. There is no play, and you should not be creating a situation where the residents of this building start parking at Colonial Village or in the commercial space, the banks, the commercial spaces where the bank is. And I think if, if this, project is not um, sized properly and thought through clearly, you will end up with a very serious um, problem between the residents of this space who won't have enough parking and surrounding business and uh, residential properties. And I don't think the board should allow that to go on. Any other public comment? Okay. Um, Chris? I just wanted to clarify one thing. Um, when we first started looking at this project and the a space in front of the building, um, we called this the Amherst Common because we thought it was an extension of the common that's up by um, the old East Street School. But since then, um, we've done some research, and the research has shown that this area south of Belchertown Road is not really part of that common. The common really just exists north of Belchertown Road. So I just wanted to clarify that. This is just an area of wider right-of-way, and it's not a common. Thank you. Um, does the board have any other comments or questions at this time? I just have one that didn't get addressed. Did you think about solar? I have been approached with the solar for my other buildings, and uh, there is pro and cons. And even though I'm very much interested you know, in doing that, but uh, we have on this building, we have uh, condensers on the top. And to put a, a solar on the, and the, we just have a little bit of uh, roof facing south. So it really is not efficient. It's not you know, cost benefit to really go through so much to put the, that one. So that was the reason. 
Okay, so um, that's a lot. Um, so if there's no more questions for now on the board, um, we could um, continue this to a future date. Uh, when would that be possible, Chris? I think the best date would be September 18th, because I believe that um, there will be members of the planning board available for that night. Um, you might want to take a poll to see if all these members would be available on the 18th. Would uh, the 27th be an option after the other tree? I'm sorry, we did talk about that earlier. I lost my focus. So yes, we did talk about um, so let's back August up. set 27, right. yes. Um, I only know of one planning board member who's available that night so far, so we would need to poll the people who are here tonight to find out if they are available on August 27th. And what time was that meeting to start the first one, the tree? Because you're saying do the tree hearing, and then at the end of that, we would continue this. So the tree hearing would probably be scheduled for 7.05, and then this could be scheduled for 7.15 or something like that. So who is available we'll go on the 27th, Tuesday? It's a different night for us. I am. You're available? Yes. I think I am. You think you are? Good. I believe I am too. I'm just checking. I'm available. No, no. Jack, Jack is a go. David, how does your world look? I don't know. Okay, that's okay. So we have um, maybe leaning yes, so maybe leaning not sure, and we have three of us, so we would have to find out with the other two uh, members if they're available. Yeah? So I, I have heard from Ms. Chow because um, I did reach out to her about the 27th for the tree hearing, and she told me that she is available on the 27th. So um, have we said that? Three definite from this group Three, here. And Maria. And That's Maria. Four. And then she thinks. Janet. A good maybe. So you could continue it to the twenty seventh and then if we find out people aren't available, okay. then we continue it again to the eighteenth. Mm -hmm. Does that yes. um, date sound okay to the, you, August twenty seventh? Yes, August twenty yes. seventh. So the tree hearing is earlier and then we sure. would do this right after. Sure. I know there's some information you have to gather too. Sure. So. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Seems like that would be. Uh, we we need that amount of time to try to assemble yeah. some responses here. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, so um, we need a motion to continue this public hearing until the 27th then I, I move to continue the public hearing for site plan so and so and so and so <laughs> to August 27th um, there you go second okay any um, discussion okay we'll vote all in favor say aye, aye. good yep Michael okay so we Thank will you see so you much. on the 27th yes. hopefully Thank you for coming. And um, everyone, thank you. This is a really long night. Um, I hate to put off anything longer, but I think we all need to take a five minute break just to run to the bathroom and sort of get a drink of water. And then we'll start right up. So um, it's about 9.28. So in five minutes, we'll come back. So thank you. Way to go. Chris, your fortune. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This is this is a tough planning board light, remember? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it's that. I think it's that. We're going to start in a minute. I don't think so. I think I got, I think I got a green one. From what I saw? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. You want this? No, I want this. That's the I got it. I know. Maybe. There's two of them there. I didn't realize there were two of them there. Oh, well, thanks a lot. This is the back. Uh -huh. This is the filter back. Yes, they do tilt back. Oh, thank <laughs> God. It's the. They can really go to <clears throat> No. Nope. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Turn on. Okay, two. <laughs> A 
I wanted to just remind you that you do have a site visit report for this one. And was that given to us yeah. tonight? Oh, God, let me. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, okay, so we're back on. Amherst Media, are you there? Okay. I know they're probably sleeping. No, I mean, um, okay, so, oh, gee, it's way past 7.15. Thank you for waiting and your patience, everyone. Um, we had a big night. It's a tough summer getting people to be available. Um, okay, so preamble three, here we go. In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted. This hearing is being held for the purpose of providing an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding SPR 2020-01, SPP 2020-01, 462 Main Street, Center East Common, 462 Main Street. This joint public hearing to request a site plan review approval to construct a mixed use building on the easterly side of the property containing 16 dwelling units and one professional office space, including site improvements under section 3.325 to be co-located with the existing commercial building containing seven office spaces under section 3.358 and in accordance with section 3.3 Zero 01 and demolition of the existing accessory building. Request special permit to extinguish special permit ZBA FY 2018 08, ZBA um, FY 20, uh, 2005 18, and ZBA FY 2004 dash 00034, ZBA FY 1998-00024, ZBA FY 1980-00071, and any other special permits currently or previously associated with the site BN Zoning District, Map 14B, Parcel 68. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to ask anyone, is there uh, any board member disclosures? I see none. We'll move on to section three, applicant presentation. Is it Great. a long one? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, you do what you got to do. No, no, no. We will keep it uh, <laughs> no, no. brief. So thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Tom Reedy. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson here in Amherst, here on behalf of 462 Maine uh, and its application, as the uh, chairwoman mentioned. With me this evening is um, the manager of 462 Main and also um, the property owner, John Robleski. Uh, we've also got his wife, Anne, who's in the back, and it's her birthday, but I wasn't going to mention it, but I decided to mention <laughs> Happy it. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, uh, Christine Royal is here, and she's our architect. And then we've also got Bill Osley, who is the civil designer. And so I think what, what we'll do is... I'll give this a brief overview of the project, talk a little bit about John, his history here in town. Then I'll turn it over to Bill to talk about the site and then to Christine to talk about the architecture, the layout, elevations, et cetera. And then we can, start, we can talk a little bit about management, um, traffic, and anything else that the board uh, would like to talk about. I think if I could draw your attention to the screen, what we've got just to, for a little bit of site context, this is 462 Main. Uh, it was previously zoned general residence, but then uh, it is now zoned um, neighborhood business. And so I think really what that allows is a project like this to come forward. So what you've got in front of you are two separate decisions. One is a special permit to eliminate all those previously issued special permits. And those special permits were issued because the uses uh, were in the general residence zoning district. And those uses required special permits. But since the zone change to um, neighborhood business, no longer are special permits required for these uses. So the office use itself requires a site plan review, as does this mixed use. And so when you're, when you're looking at the project, it really is 
um, site-wide a mixed-use project. So what we have is that building on the left. Uh, it's an existing office building, about 2,400 square feet, uh, supported by 20 parking spaces. And what you're going to hear about this evening is the proposal for that easterly uh, 16 residential unit with 550 square foot um, office space on the easterly side of uh, the building, supported by 32 parking spaces. And we can get into to parking later. Um, John owns um, High Street 22, High Street, which has 12 units and I believe 40 beds, supported by 34 parking spaces. Uh, he is a former Amherst police officer, came to town in 1971. Um, and bought his first rental property in 1981, which I think 734 Main Street, um, which is a three family that he and Ann still own. So it's that property, it's the High Street property, and then this would be that third property. And the proposal you'll see is for John to continue to manage this property as he's done with those other two. Um, and just by somewhat high level, of those 16 units that we're proposing, four of them are gonna be one bedroom, uh, ten of them are going to be two-bedroom, and two of them are going to be three-bedroom. Um, I think with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Bill to talk about the site, and then we can start talking about the architecture and anything else that you'd like to talk about. Good evening. My name is William Osley, O-S-L-E-Y, the project engineer with uh, Mott McDonald, an engineering firm in West Springfield. Uh, our firm prepared the uh, civil site design drawings for this project. And uh, okay, we got the, the existing conditions plan shows the uh, existing uh, uh, wood frame structure, two story, and a garage in the back, uh, associated uh, paid parking, uh, landscaping, lawn area, and some wooded area. Um, this is all on a uh, three-quarter acre parcel. And um, I guess we can go to the uh, next plan. This the uh, proposed layout. This is the uh, proposed layout plan. Um, you, know, you can see the uh, uh, the proposed building on the easterly side of the of the site. Uh, the setbacks are 20 feet from the uh, easterly property line and 20 feet at the at the rear. Uh, the um, uh, the proposed layout here shows the uh, uh, parking area in front of the uh, the proposed unit. And uh, there, um, an access to the uh, to the site would be via the existing driveway, 18 foot wide driveway from Main Street. So that will uh, re the the access really will remain the same. The curb cut will remain the same, uh, but the uh, the driveway itself will be the pavement will be ripped up during construction and repaved. But essentially. Exactly the same place. All right. Um, here, um, the uh, wood framed uh, garage you'll see is missing from this plan because it's uh, it's proposed to be demolished. The uh, the other structure will stay the same. Uh, sidewalks on the site would be concrete, all of them five feet wide, and uh, in compliance with ADA specifications for, for slope. Uh, and sidewalks to the, um, the ground floors would all be in compliance with the uh, Fair Housing Act as well as ADA, meaning that uh, each one of the ground floor door doorways is uh, barrier free, uh, and uh, you can tell by the, well, if you look at the spot elevations. If you want to, you know, if you want to get into the weeds on that, but, 
uh, you'll see that they're, they're, uh, the, the grading is 2% uh, or less. So it uh, all represents uh, you know, barrier-free, uh, wheelchair accessible accessibility. Um, parking lot will obviously be paved. It'll have bitumen berm uh, the perimeters. Um, parking spaces will be delineated by by painting by painted stripes. And uh, uh, handicap uh, parking signs will be provided uh, for each of the three handicap spaces. This is the uh, this is the grading plan. Um, in in grading the site and and, and selecting the uh, the finished floor elevations, uh, first of all, this this proposed building will be on a slab. There will not be a basement. And uh, we try to balance the uh, uh, the uh, elevations. A proposed building and and the existing one. You can see that uh, if you look at the uh, there's a uh, benchmark on a first floor sill right uh, at uh, 97.50 uh, roughly. And if you look at the, the elevations, the finished elevations of the um, proposed, you'll see that we're we're, uh, we're they're, they vary from from 96 to 98. So averaging 97, we try to balance, to get the finished floor is about the same. So visually, everything looks, from the street level, it looks, looks, uh, looks uh, balanced. Um, this building is stepped, meaning the finished floors do, do grade from 98 to 96, and that's to take advantage of the, the general slope of the property. So it, it, it'll uh, just minimize the amount of uh, cut and fill. Mm. Uh, the, the grading in the parking lots will generally be between two to five percent, which is uh, um, which is reasonable. Uh, in the in the back on the north side of the uh, north end of the building, uh, you'll see there's a grassed area and there's uh, a, a, very, a shallow swale that's shown, and that'll that'll be to uh, to uh, um, aid in the drainage around the around the uh, north end of the building, and it's carried around uh, to the same way it does now. So we talk about the uh, overall drainage. No, let's oh, okay. keep it up there. At the sure. uh, keep it up at that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we'll getting to the stormwater. Uh, but the, you can see how the site is graded uh, from the north west to the southeast. That that's pretty much how it how it's graded now. It's the, the existing. You know, we try to keep the uh, drainage the uh, drainage patterns. As they are existing, and uh, as far as the uh, for for stormwater, the uh, the uh, northern called the northern parking lot drains to a catch basin. Um, at right, yeah, just yeah, um, at the 96, mm -hmm. yeah, it drains all that water drains to a catch basin, yeah, right by the island, and then there's another catch basin. Um, Further down, a little more, right there, and that uh, that catches all the uh, uh, stormwater from the uh, from the parking lots, and from there, uh, that where the where the cursor is there now, that uh, that is a stormwater uh, 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 dynamic separator. Meaning it, it removes 90, uh, not quite 90, it removes 86% of the total suspended solids. And from there, it flows into a detention basin. And that's a sub, that's subsurface. It's uh, essentially a large tank. 
and the uh, the runoff from the from the, the proposed building roof flows. It, it's collected in gutters into pipes, and it's uh, it goes directly to the uh, infiltration basin shown. Now the infiltration basin overflows into the detention basin, and from there it goes to a uh, outlet control structure, and then into the, uh, um, the, the town system. Uh, this is all in compliance with uh, Mass DEP stormwater management policy uh, standards one through ten. Uh, the town, as far as we know, the town does not have a bylaw, a stormwater bylaw yet. I guess you're working on it. Uh, so we're so we used uh, we were, uh, uh, Jason Skeels recommended we use the uh, DEP standards, which we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was reviewed by Jason. Yep. And we got feedback from, from Jason. And, right. But he had no problems with the or, or issues. Uh, now we performed the stormwater, uh, stormwater management using uh, uh, stormwater modeling uh, software uh, by uh, the name of the company is HydroCAD. It's very popular in the area. A lot of people use it. A lot, of, a lot of engineers use it. Um, and all that was is presented in our stormwater management report, which went to uh, Jason Skeels for review. So essentially this stormwater, the management system, has been, uh, it's been designed to attenuate peak discharge rates, uh, uh, recharge the groundwater, and promote water quality per the DEP guidelines. Let's go through the water. Go to the utility plan. Yeah, here. All right, the, uh, the water and sewer uh, for the building are, would be connected to the water and sewer at, uh, at uh, Spruce Ridge, which stated John, John uh, Drobleski owns it. So he is able to uh, run the water from uh, Spruce Ridge via the four inch line uh, and connect it into the mechanical room. And the same with the uh, sewer can exit the mechanical room and be tied into uh, the, uh, the sewer system in, uh, in uh, Spruce Ridge, in the parking lot. Uh, of course, you'd have to have easements would, have to, would, would be created uh, to allow for this uh, connection to happen. Uh, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you were in contact with the water department and to get this. Uh, yeah, I had a meeting with Gilbert yeah. and Jason. You know, in the beginning of this process, we talked about the possibility of this, and, and they were very much in favor of that. Oh. Yep. And they were very much in favor of that um, because they said they had just done over Main Street, and this saves uh, tying into anything on Main Street and cutting into Main Street. And it's a very, very easy thing to do because it's like 80 feet away from the current system on my other property there, and the water is literally 10 feet from the property line there. Mm -hmm. We've done a flow test on High Street for the fire sprinklers um, back in May. Uh, the town water department was present for that, and I think the fire department letter kind of addresses that. So, yeah, it's all been looked at and okay. Thank you, John. Um, let's see, as far as the utilities, I think oh, the only other utility that's it's what's not shown here is the um, is the electric service, the primary electric. That's going to run from well, I guess it's up to the electric company how they're going to run it. But there's a there's a pole uh, out on Main Street, close to the existing catch basin in that general area. Oh, it, it should have shown there. The pole is shown there. Yeah, a little, a little yeah. Right, so right. Right, right. But each one of those utilities would need to produce a uh, you know plan to, for the contractor to follow. 
Um, as far as I know, that has not been, you haven't even got any plans yet from you. You have the plans. I have, I've talked with both uh, cable and telephone and electric engineers. So. And I think maybe just now is a good time to insert that John is looking at solar and he is looking at uh, doing an electrical vehicle charging station. And I think you've already started talking to Evasource about that charging station. Yes, I filed the application for uh, two uh, charging stations and it'll probably be located, um, if you remember this morning, I pointed out those three shrubs that were on a corner where Jack parked. So those first spaces right in front of unit one off the corner of that building, right about there, to share those two parking spaces as charging spaces. And we talked about people that work there in the offices during the day, could you use them to charge their vehicles? And at nighttime, those people would be gone and share those spaces for the residents to use for charging at night. Uh, well, the other thing I guess I can address is the uh, erosion sediment control plan. So we prepared it's. It's the very, the very, I think it's the very last one. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, uh, the um, this plan will show you that uh, uh, there's a construction rock construction entrance plan uh, for the driveway. And this is to remove any mud and dirt from uh, vehicle wheels. Uh, that's shown with the heavy, heavy rock um, hatching. And then on the uh, south and east side of the building, there's, you can see there's a, a, a grid pattern that represents a, a jute matting. And that'll, that, once it's loamed, it's seeded, uh, this matting it will be spread over it and it's pinned it's pinned down to the ground and you know it, it's uh, it'll allow grass to grow through it and but at the same time prevent erosion and we have that uh, there and then at the northern little northern part of uh, yeah the northern part of the site also there, there's there is some there's some sloping there um, so we decided that that would that would uh, work. Um, the catch basins, the one in the street and the two on the on the on the site, um, would be fitted with uh, inlet filter bags. That would be to catch any sediment entering from a storm, you know, from storm runoff into the uh, you know into the catch basins. Uh, silt fence will be installed. It's uh, shown there as an uh, SF. Uh, right along the uh, eastern, the southern and eastern uh, property line at the toe of the slopes. It runs all the way up um, yeah, to part way up the slope. Yeah, right, right to there. So, um, and that will be um, a requirement of the contractor to uh, install it and maintain it throughout the uh, the whole construction process. Uh, and the same with any of these uh, erosion control devices, it's up to the contractor to, to maintain them. Um, and I think part of this would be part of the construction logistics plan, and uh, while we don't have one now, we would accept the condition that we have to provide it, whether it's to the uh, planning department or the building department or to the board at a public meeting, if you wish, prior to the issuance of a building permit. Uh, and I will note that Mr. Robleski has had discussions with the VFW across the street for contractor parking, uh, and he's got a letter to that effect that we're happy to submit for the record. All right. uh, the other thing I can address is the uh, long-term operations and maintenance plan, or an O&M plan, is called. Um, it's been developed by our office, and uh, it was it's part of the uh, um, uh, stormwater management plan or drainage plan. Um, it's uh, included in that plan as 
uh, Appendix G. And that plan, what it does, it, it, it presents inspection and maintenance procedures excuse me, associated with the various um, uh, components of the system. And it's, and it's, and it's made for a long term. It's, it states the, you know, uh, how, how often the, um, you know, like the, the uh, uh, infiltration basin and the uh, detention basin are inspected and maintained and things like that. Uh, this, uh, uh, it's required by DEP, so it, and, um, uh, and it's, it, it'll be implemented. But that's something that, uh, that Mr. Robleski would be implementing and not the contractor. This is like after the site is stabilized and it's constructed. So, so there are two plans. There's the erosion sediment control plans, which is the contractor's responsibility, and there's a long-term operations and maintenance plan that would be uh, under the management of the facility. Uh, and I guess I guess a couple of points. So um, Jason Skills has reviewed the plans, didn't have any comments. I think Beth Wilson looked at it from a CONCOM perspective and saw no need for any wetland permitting required here. So, I mean, with that, uh, we're happy to answer any questions about the site if you've got them, or we can look at um, the architecture and then the floor plans in use, um, given the time. Yes, Chris. I just wanted to note that we did receive um, messages from the fire department today, and I think I emailed them to you. Unfortunately, we don't have them in our packets, but I believe that they were, um, you know, they didn't have any adverse comments about this project. And we haven't received a written confirmation from the town engineer. I think there should be an email to that effect. It's an email saying that he had reviewed everything and didn't okay. have any comments. And I sort of, um, what do you call it, paraphrased it in item number eight on page five of the development application report. The town engineer has reviewed the plans, the traffic impact statement, and stormwater management plans and has no comments or concerns. That was kind of a direct quote from his email. And I thought we had sent you the Great. email. Great. It might be in the pop. Great. Just confirming. Okay. Um, I've got the fire protection one as well. I don't know if you've got that in your packet. I think we got, yeah, okay. that one. Received it via email, but I don't think we copied it for them. Okay. Yeah, there was no copy here. Double checking, because we have double going today, so, oh, yeah. And there's, there's two there. The first one was from June, and it oh, identified okay. a couple of things, and then the second one effectively shows the resolution of all of those things that were outstanding. Does anyone want to look at this? Because yeah, basically what happened there with the fire department, um, they were unaware that a flow test was done. I guess I assumed that the engineer doing a flow test was going to notify them, but that didn't happen. So now <laughs> with the new information that, you know, that the flow test was done and was satisfactory and all that, um, he did the second transmittal today. Makes sense. Um, well, we had a site visit today, so we're going to cover that first. We actually, if I can find that, um, Yep, we have one here. Uh, all five of us were here. Um, does anyone want to summarize this? Uh, it's pretty easy since we have the report. <laughs> <laughs> Don't all volunteer at once. <laughs> Don't make me do it. <laughs> I, I, I'll stumble through it. Just, just work. Just. Uh, at the site visit, we observed the existing uh, building and uh, and the garage and uh, the area that was designated as a uh, uh, trash maintenance. Trash yes, uh, the extent of the parking lot. We looked at uh, fencing along the, the west side of the property. Um, because there was an email from the uh, butter, we were looking at uh, an HVAC unit uh, uh, that was to the uh, west of the building, and um, got good perspective in terms of uh, the architectural drawings and and how the the, the planned building uh, would be set along the the east side of the of the property. 
uh, and John did to describe you know, how the sewer and water was coming in from, uh, from his property to the east. Um, and am I missing anything? Do you want to look to the questions? Questions. And questions. Who walks through the property uh, of the landover, landowner to the west? Doesn't the fence prevent people from walking through? I guess that was a comment that mm -hmm. they were worried about trespassers going through. Um, and they were wondering about undergraduates uh, as tenants. Can they be refused tenancy? Is this age discrimination? Uh, they are not a protected uh, class of people, uh, was our understanding from Chris. Mm -hmm. So, and then are there apartments in the existing building? No, it's all uh, professional. And, and then we talked about the trash room and where the door would be located on the east side of that uh, addition. And who maintains the property? Uh, John, you, you um, hire out the landscape maintenance and, and snow plowing. Uh, what will be done to the existing sign? The existing sign will be kept, it's straightened out, it's a little bit uh, out of pitch, so uh, that's going to be corrected and, and painted, and a piece may be added to the top to show the property address. Will people be able to see adequately when they exit uh, the site onto Main Street? The railroad tracks are close by and there is a large amount of shrubbery that blocks the site distance to the east. And the response was the shrubbery will be cut back. And another question, should markers be installed at either side of the driveway to indicate where the driveway is located? This would help people entering and exiting to know where the driveway is but might impede the site distance. Um, I forget what that was about, the markers. Um, well, they can address it if they want to. Yeah, it. okay. And can, can construction workers park at the VFW? And yes, that, that's going to happen. Is the number of parking places enough for the proposed uses? And uh, the existing apartment development to the east that John owns has 40 bedrooms and 34 parking places. The parking spaces uh, are usually not full. Now there are 30 cars that park there. In the past, the numbers have ranged between 24 and 30. Yeah. You can, after you can come back and say, yeah, can I yeah. see what's wrong there. Yeah. Uh, question, where is the bike rack going to be? The bike rack will be next to the trash room in a covered location. What is the structure in the front lawn? And it's an ejector pump for the sanitary sewage. Um, the new building will be served by the sewer line that passes through the property to the east, so that will no longer be required. How will the new building get its utilities? The utilities for the new building will, will all be underground. And what is the material of the new building? And it's uh, gonna have vinyl siding. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, if you want to clarify any of those, feel free. Yeah, just on the, uh, the cars next door, that's backwards. Years ago, I had 30, up to 30 cars oh, here yeah. for the 34 parking spaces. Then it's gone down over the years to 27, I think, two years in a row, 25. And then last year and this coming year, it would be 23. Yeah, that, that, I recall you saying 23. That. So if you could just fix that in the report, great. Yeah, so the average ratio of cars, actual cars to bedrooms is about 61.6 percent. Okay. Um, so at this point to, thank you, to the board, I would propose that we break, this might be a good point to break and continue the hearing, but I do understand that there might be some questions that you're afraid you'll forget, or I don't know if this would get continued to the 18th, if someone will be here. Mm -hmm. You might consider hearing from the public. Yeah, that's I'm going to do that okay. too, right. But just the board was first, so I was going to. Uh, um, so if, if you do, I, I wanted to ask if any of you do have questions that you'd like to ask tonight. Um, 
or are you willing to wait until the next hearing? Because um, what I was going to propose is that we hear from the public and let them do their thing, and then we can address anyone who has some questions. Okay. And as long as we, if I could, as long as we could, if we're going to get continued, yeah. get a list of like homework, if there is such, just so that when we come back, hopefully that's the last hearing, with all due respect, the last hearing in front of you, and, and hopefully we can get approval then. Okay. I think we have some things that, Chris, we already know about. Um, I hear you. Okay, so a uh, show of hands, who here right now would like to ask a question uh, or make a statement about this project? I, I see one. Okay, so again, like the last time, if one of you could stay up here maybe, and um, Ms. Pam, if you want to come up. I, that was the only hand I saw, but if, after she's done, if you have a question, let me know. Um, Dorothy Pam, 229 Amity Street. It's just a quick question about the possibility of a few affordable units. And I was looking at the bedroom plan on the first floor, which we've been told is totally handicapped accessible. There are two one bedroom apartments. I just thought it would be very nice if those could be perhaps for a low income senior. Just something to consider. So if there's no more questions from the public, um, I'll come back to the board. Is there anything that anyone will, and just to clarify, would this get moved to the 18th of September, or what are we thinking? It would be up to you. You could continue to the 27th of August if you wanted to. Oh, that's a full night, though, isn't it? That will, it would have the tree hearing and Mr. McCheese project, and then this one. And you've already heard the presentations, so you'd really be working on conditions and findings. Um, um, for, uh, you know, uh, you were maybe, maybe. I, um, and if I understood it, Mr. Bert Whistle could not attend on the 18th. Exactly. And, but do you have a preference to this? I mean, would you rather no you mm -hmm. on the 27th and or? Um. Is it okay if it goes to the 18th? It's okay if it goes to the 18th. Okay, thank you. Um, May I ask, have you adopted the Mullins rule? Yes, okay. we have. And there's two members who are not here tonight who, Perfect. if they're, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I, I'm i understanding that we will move this to the 18th of September. Ooh. Do we have to have a time or we just, the night? Do we already have a time? What are we We should at say um, 705, because I think that's is the that first one on the agenda. Okay, yep. great. 705. Is there any way to get this on the, the 27th, I guess, given, so without hearing what we have to come back with, given the long list that the previous applicant had to come back with, given the, um, how this fits into the neighborhood, we can get all into the reasons why, and I think just uh, given the detail that Mr. Robleski had put forward to get to this point. Um, I know that he was looking to break ground in September, um, and so a September 18th hearing would obviously push that timeline off, and, and I think as all you, you all know with construction, if we, don't, if we get approved in September, we don't start, who knows when the snow's gonna start to fly and the ground is gonna freeze and when the plants are gonna close, and so all of a sudden you're talking about a spring start, which I don't know how long the construction's gonna be, but then, any, I mean, the lease terms here in town are a little bit strange because they either go from May to May or from September to September. So um, I'm, that would be the request. <laughs> I hear you. All right. So, Chris, could we just run over what do you have listed right now for homework or comeback for them? I, I've been trying to scribble a few things. Um, and if you see, you also gave me a list of we did have a um, development application report, so the applicant could go through the development application report and see what kinds of things were mentioned there. But if you want me to do that. Um, and a lot of them were, I mean, that I saw were conditions. I mean, there was one thing that suggested maybe if the fire department hadn't got back to you yet to continue it before the approval, yeah. but the other ones I saw seemed that they could be appropriately conditioned and we could just come back at a public meeting or submit it to the planning department or the building department prior to either 
the building permit or the certificate of occupancy, depending upon the type of condition that it is. And I mean, that would be the preferred method of doing I it. could quickly run through the development application report and point out the things that I think are needed, and then I could quickly look through my notes if that's what that, you would like me to do. Because I think what they're saying is they, they would rather do their work now um, and be ready. Yeah, which would be 27th. Can we do the 27th? Okay, we'll try. Yeah. Uh, no. How's the order go? I mean, because they, would they go first? It, it, would it make sense for them to go first? Or how's that work? The tree thing, but. You said the tree would go first and then Amir and then this one. Because, right, we made a motion for them. We could go earlier, but. I worry that if we, well, if we just run over, I mean, we could do a six. Could do it six or six thirty. Do it six, yeah. or you could put us at seven ten, and then I mean, it's just the general time. So you start the tree hearing at seven o five, and then sandwich us in between before you uh, take Mr. Michki again with his project after. You know, these that would are be hard for my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, Miss. Um, McCowan <laughs> just asked why we it's couldn't late. have it's a late. meeting in the, the beginning of September. I will be out of town in the oh, beginning okay. of September. Okay. But you would be here at the 27th. Yeah. Um, all right. So, because you also had given me this list of conditions, which are conditions, but it's more just was there something that is like, oh, we they need to... Well, I noticed one or two things. There's um, a pad and a light shown at the rear mm. of the building where the office is located. But there's no door there, and I wondered if they, if they could clarify whether there's actually. What page are you? Are you going um, through the? I'm going a page three at the bottom of the page. Okay, great. At the lighting plan. Um, yeah. Under issues to consider, uh, is there an exit there or not? And why do you need a well, sconce light and a pad if there's no exit? Um, so that was one of the things. Um, then I think I We've asked got a response for to that if you want. A photometric to. plan. They gave yeah, us um, information about lighting, but they didn't really give us a photometric plan. They so that right. would be helpful if they could do that. Um, uh, to confirm that the sign is not illuminated. Um, to, I guess, let's see, submission of sample leases for commercial and office uses All right. and for residential use. Um, okay, let's see. So there were conditions on page five that I had suggested that be brought over from the um, special permit, and there may be some discussion about whether these are reasonable or not, but one of them was that the office building shall continue to be occupied only for business and professional offices as described in section 3.358 and 3.359 of the zoning bylaw, unless a special permit or additional site plan review approval is received for those other uses. Um, that seems reasonable. The businesses shall be, not be conducted after 9 p.m., that sort of keeps noise level down in the neighborhood. Exterior lighting shall be downcast and not shine onto adjacent streets or properties. The building and site shall be managed in accordance with the management plan approved on X date. Um, and, the, one the, those, oh, sorry. and those conditions would effectively extinguish the previous permits? Yes. You don't, you could extinguish the previous permits and include those conditions in your site plan review. And that would be fine. Right. Yep. And then um, the construction logistics plan. And what else? Um, and then you need to um, make a finding that this, that the two buildings are clearly complementary to each other. That's something that you need to do. And then I can go through my notes. Can I take a second to ask a question? Um, you have these 20 foot setbacks. Would that give people space to barbecue and put some chairs? Or is, or does the slope prevent that? Or just in terms like space on the you know, place for people to hang out? Well, 
Bill can correct me if he's still here. <laughs> I think the slope that, the finished slope here, you see the dotted lines yeah. with the starting in 198, that's the existing slope. So you can see that the finished slope is gonna pretty much mirror that, mainly up in that corner. It gets a little steeper down toward the front where the stormwater is. Mm -hmm. Plus there's about 2,000 square feet on the north end of the parking lot around that big tree and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they'll have that privacy fence along that north border. So there's plenty of room near too. And this grass there flat. So you probably want to have a condition about the um, clearing of the shrubbery at the entry drive. Yeah. Can I, I talk about that rear exit and get that cleared up? I think I mentioned it this morning. That is no, it's not required. We are under the understanding here and just figured we needed a rear door on that office building, but the code does not require it. And the building inspector said, really, if you put a door there, where's it gonna go? You know, so you might need a sidewalk and that type of thing. So, I mean, that building is only 25 eliminate. feet wide. So that door has been eliminated and it's now a window. So, so eliminate that pad. That pad is, yeah. And there's a light that was referenced outside there too, and that won't be there. And I guess maybe to further my argument, hopefully you can see the type of things we're talking about aren't necessarily that heavy of a lift. So if we're able to come back on the 27th and be towards the beginning, I think we'll have all of these things straightened out well ahead of time. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> yes. So you could do, the, um, you could do this uh, uh, Main Street project first and then do the um, Mr. McCheese project plan and then the tree hearing after that because I haven't advertised the tree hearing yet so the only one that's really been uh, definitively scheduled was uh, McCheese continuation right the, the only thing I, I'll just ask the board is do you feel it's important if they have the tree settled which it isn't even fully settled at that point because it goes to the town manager but do you have any preference yeah I, I it seems to me that the, the tree issue ought to be settled before we uh, weigh in on the uh, on the uh, site plan review um, because if the tree has to stay uh, the building has to be either totally redesigned or abandoned or something I, it seems to me uh, and if the it, if the tree is allowed to be taken down we won't know that until the town manager makes a decision sometime after the tree warden and the, when we have a hearing Isn't that correct I think they're really I think you can separate them you could grant site plan review and um, conditional on the trees being allowed to be taken down by the town, allowed to be taken down by the tree warden, the planning board, and the town manager. I don't think that that needs to hold you up from doing what you need to do with site plan review. Because no matter what way we decide about the tree, we won't know. Because is there a time period before the town manager has to weigh in or? He said he would try to attend the, the hearing, and okay. so he would hear the testimony, and then he feels that he would be able to make a decision very soon after that. I was going to say, the, the amount of fill proposed in that area would, uh, yeah, it would have to be, they wouldn't be able to just, like, cut out the building and have a spot for it. It, it would, uh, it would be a major effort, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're still proposing that we do this and then um, the site plan review and, and then do the tree hearing? Yeah, and start at 6. I agree. 6. Thank you very much. So. We did, and I asked for, I don't know, we might have, because I, I did ask, does that one have a time? I said, is it, do you have to have a time? And you said yes. We might have to go back to Amherst Media.
How about, well then we could create times now and if we go look at the video and if we did say a time, we can readjust. Do you think a half an hour is enough? No, but it doesn't have to be a reasonable time at a lot of people to show up for the meeting, and then they show up at the meeting too early after a couple of hours. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, don't we think 7 and 7.05 and 7.10, like we had it tonight, isn't that satisfactory? No, that's the 18. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That'd be worse than techno. <laughs> We need a motion. I move to continue the hearing until, uh, what was the date? August 27th at 7 o'clock. 7.05. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Oh, seven. Seven yes. Okay. So it's 7. I should write this down. So it's 7, 7.05 and 7.10. Okay. Yeah. I'll second. <laughs> um, any discussion? And you're good with this? Yeah, I mean, I frankly, we would prefer six, but if the board can't make it, just because I mean, we waited here tonight, and so we know what it's like when you get here at 7.15 and then wait till that time. So if folks are here at 7.05 for the tree hearing, which won't actually start until 7.45, if we take 45 minutes and then Amir's thing starts after that, you might have people starting at 7.15 and here until you know, 9 o'clock before their hearings even. I, 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 I feel comfortable that you start ours at 6 o'clock, we'll be done before that 7.05 tree hearing. And then everything there is a mirror related, if you will. I know Janet and I were okay with six. Chris, part a lot of this leans on you. Yes, You're here. <laughs> so how do you three feel about six? I prefer um, I prefer seven. I'm good with six. What about six thirty? I feel like I'm like <laughs> <laughs> If everybody else prefers six, I'll come at six. We get done earlier. I said what I said. So. All right, David, any feeling on uh, I think that's great. Six o'clock. Oh. I know you were a maybe, but yeah, you know, I didn't know if we were a maybe. It's okay for all of us to come at six. All right, it's a democratic thing. I think we're going to go with six o'clock. Right. Thank you, Michael. Seven o'clock for the trees. Okay, second. And so that's what we're going with. All in favor, say aye. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Is that your song or? Yeah. Thank you. And happy birthday. <laughs> what a you way to spend it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There were so many splash drives that were just rendered off. Oh. We'll have to look for so a no. on it. Um, that, that's probably a mirror's flash drive they were using. Oh, uh, Chris, you might want to we'll grab it. So I say we just hold at this point and we move to adjourn. You want to move to adjourn? <laughs> yes. I'll, can I second? I, somebody second. We're adjourning. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience. We have, an, have an A and R. Oh, we have to do okay. But I think it'll be all right. Easy. That's all right. So we're in hold right now. We're yep. ready to vote. So, Chris, is there anything we have to do tonight? Okay. So this is on. Uh, where is this? Bay Road. I think you've seen this one before, but you've seen it in a different format. It's Je Jeffrey Brown, who's an attorney in town. Oh, yeah and his son have been um, making plans for their property. So I'm going to pass along 
a plan that shows what the property is like now, and then I will come around with the plan to show what they're going to be doing. Adequate frontage for this parcel. Yeah. What there's about nothing this? For this yeah. Parcel. Yeah. There's nothing for this. There's so we can write on here not a buildable lot. And, and this, this one already is, says not a separate buildable lot. Okay. But then and this becomes a buildable lot. No. Why? If it, it, if it works no to without no, it. There's, there's no frontage on the. They're separate. What do they want to connect to this one? What piece do they want to connect to this? This, these are two separate pieces. Yeah, Jeffrey Brown's son lives here. Okay. Jeffrey Brown lives here. Okay, I see. So they're connecting this to this. Yes. I got it. Okay. And I can write on here not a buildable lot because it's not, it doesn't have frontage. And then if he wants to make it buildable, he'll have to do something else. Okay. He'd have to re-straighten this out and then something get this like done as a flag lot. Yep. And this is also a hit have double flag lot. Yeah. Now you will see this again actually because his son came to us last week in March about doing something new here. But this is today's plan. Okay. So uh, will you authorize the chair to have the chair to Sure. Yeah, if this Wait, is was it, I'm sorry, just can we just the plan is to do what? Is to join? Is to is to take this property here, which exists. Yes. This line is not here. Right. And to put this line there. Yes. And then take. 